we see the chat on there. And we're She's live. Gonna we're live. Welcome to the Sauzcast, baby, on Valuetainment. Is this episode number 40? Eric, can I get a number? Episode number 40. Thank you. I just heard it in my ears. We got a spicy, <laughs> spicy <laughs> show today. I couldn't. Uh, these people were arguing off camera. I had to, guys. Your producers save it for the deserve a raise. I know. Whoever What's going on? This. Thank you, Ruslan. <laughs> I mean, we are fighting over here. I said, guys, let's just be friends here for right now. But I appreciate the spirit. Anyway, welcome to the Southcast. This is where money and relationships meet. Only on Valuetainment, the number one channel for entrepreneurs on the planet. Is that not right, Natalia? Yes, absolutely. That's right. She just heard, she's instructed to say yes. Whatever I say. So whatever I say, <laughs> she's true, like, yes, true. sir. We got it. So, um, you know, the show was basically most about money. But we started seeing people want you to talk about relationships, dating, business relationships, wife, lifestyle. And we d- dive uh, head first into that. That's fair to say. Um, because we've also done the analytics. 95% of our audience are men, entrepreneurial type men. So what we say is, look, guys, we want to get you paid. We want to get you laid. And you can do it your way. That's kind of like (laughs) our thing over here. So this is where money and relationships meet. Uh, And we have a sick lineup today. Uh, So let me kind of go through the panel here and get to know our guests. And then I'm going to open it up for discussion here. So to my left, the lovely Allie Ray. Let me get this right. You're a former ICU nurse who quit your job during COVID and became one of the top earning OnlyFans content creators on the planet correct yeah okay so nothing i said was a false uh, flag right there correct all right look at that um rebecca barrett drove here from orlando Mm -hmm. former south South florida girl Mm -hmm. from what i understand because i got to give a shout out to ali drummond who referred you she said total boss babe new york making money crushing it gave it all up to be a housewife yeah yeah Mm -hmm. uh, youtube creator too youtube creator as well Mm -hmm. Um, and now you're a stay-at-home w- one kid just gave birth how many months ago? Three months. Three months ago. Congratulations. Thank or you. as Jews like to say, mazel tov. Thanks. Speaking of Jews, the the my friend is Christian over here. You know the kind of like, <laughs> the, like the new <laughs> school Jew, the new school. Like I'm the 2. old school. Uh, the 2. 2. 2. 2.0. <laughs> Some may call it the better version. Some may say that you're hijacking what we already created. I don't know. That's just what people are saying. But we got my boy Ruslan. I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name. You, you can give yourself to. a shout out right now. Yeah, Ruslan Karoglanov. That's how you say my last Karoglanov. name. Karoglanov. Yes. Can you say that, Natalia? No. <laughs> Karoglanov. Who was that? Who was that? Someone's playing a video. Oh, that's. Phone's off. Um, <laughs> but anyway, Christian, rapper, uh, content creator, and just all around good dude, and he swagged out in the Jordans. Is that. That's. Jordan 12s. Jordan 12s. To be specific. Uh, to, to be specific. <laughs> yes. So today, as you guys have clearly seen in the title and in what we've discussed, we're talking OnlyFans, we're talking Housewives, we're talking Christianity, our OnlyFans girls' wifey material. We'll get into that. <laughs> some say yes, some say no. Ruslan, I'm sure you got strong feelings if, uh, you know, ladies like this, uh, how they, where the religion doctrine comes into all this. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking today. So what I want to do, just to kind of set the tone, because the audience might know who you are or they might not, I'm going to bring up a couple topics, and whoever doesn't do the specific topic, you're going to weigh in, and we'll set the tone. So OnlyFans, right? So um, I don't know how much you guys know about it. Ali knows about it a little bit. I've dabbled in some OnlyFans, not so much uh, creating content, but hanging out with the ladies that do in South Beach, so I'm familiar with this. Uh, But Ruslan, what are your thoughts on OnlyFans girls. So OnlyFans, from my understanding, is mm-hmm. like a version of Patreon where you can put adult content. It's, it's within their fair use mm-hmm. guidelines, okay. right? Is that a fair assessment Correct. of what yeah. that is? Mm-hmm. So I think there's probably a wide spectrum of creators on there. I don't mm-hmm. want to assume. Mm-hmm. I've never been on it. I, I've, I don't know what the interface looks like. I have no idea. So the, what is my assessment mm-hmm. of... When you hear the word OnlyFans, what's the for your initial reaction? Uh, thirst traps and capitalism. <laughs> That's my You're reaction. Probably not far off. Okay, <laughs> Rebecca, what are your thoughts on OnlyFans? When I when you hear OnlyFans, what comes to mind? Um, boobs, <laughs> butt, <laughs> boobs and butt. Yeah. Allie, are either of them wrong? Uh, no, I think they've nailed it. <laughs> no 
no pun thirst intended. traps and capitalism and nailed it. Okay, cool. Burps and buns. So uh, the concept of housewives. This is something that you talk about and being a good wife. Yeah. Um, are you? Are you? Would you consider yourself a housewife? What are your thoughts on just being a good wife, supporting your man, just being a housewife? What oh, comes abso- to mind? I absolutely support that. It's something I'm very proud of. I've been married since I was 18. Wow. Um, we've been married now almost 20 years. And so my husband and I's relationship is, it's unmatchable. We're, we have a fantastic relationship. So I have always considered myself a good wife and been very proud to be able to actually own that title that I've been able to lead a successful marriage. Wow. Mm-hmm. And you're married to what is considered a housewife, Ruslan, right? Does your wife work or she contributes? What are your thoughts on so we being married, a housewife. Yeah, we've been married 14 years. We got we got married. We got married. I was 23. She was 21. So you guys got us beat because you got married <laughs> 18. And uh, we met we met in high school, but started dating right after high school. Uh, so initially, my wife worked. She she worked for like the city of Vista, and then she mm-hmm. uh, substituted at Tri City Christian Academy, and she's done. Uh, graphic design work. She has her certification in that. Now she primarily homeschools my son, Levi, who you met. Mm-hmm. He's seven. He's awesome. I asked um, him to be on the show. He's he like, no, I'm going to let dad do this one. I gave him the option. He's like, kind of like, very oh, respectful he's, young he's, man. Uh, yeah, so she homeschools my seven-year-old. We have a one-year-old named Gabby, and we also have our niece with us. She's six, so she homeschools. Uh, she does all of our payroll for our YouTube music business. And she works, I don't know, maybe five, ten hours a week at the church. So she contributes, and she technically gets paid for what mm-hmm. we do. Um, but pr- her primary role, role is to care for the to home for and the make home. sure the kids are educated and all that. Kind. And I'm okay. the one where I'm probably in more line with you, where I'm trying to outsource. Like, can we please get a cleaning lady? Like, yes. you don't have to do all the like. The oh, the, ROI, your wife doesn't want to. She doesn't have, want. Oh, she wow. finds We're talk joy about that. in. Uh, it's really well. She finds joy in cleaning than respect. Cleaning. But, yeah, I mean, like, I, I have meal prep for my food that comes in like twenty three meals a week get delivered to me with my macronutrients and but she refuses to do that she you know like it was tough to get her to get on instacart like mm. can you just stop going to the grocery store this is not a great use of your time she's like but i enjoy i feel her you like that okay. so, so it you, doesn't it doesn't make sense to as me, a housewife really. you feel her anyway we're talking about being a housewife we're going to get into yeah. it a lot on this episode mm-hmm. but words that come to mind where what they had to say what are your thoughts yeah absolutely i think that housewives get a bad rap and uh, we're allowed to work, mm-hmm. right? We, a lot of us do work and have skills and learn things all the time. And I think that the traditional housewife of the 1950s is not the modern day housewife, what we're seeing today. Got it. Mm-hmm. True. Um, and last but not least, you consider yourself a devout Christian. What's the best description i prefer follower of jesus follower of jesus because christian can have a lot of mm-hmm. undertones and a lot of yes. other stuff so i think when you say follower of jesus that's a bit more specific. and what was the book that you gifted me did you read it i've skimmed it <laughs> oh you gotta read it's like it, the biggest book i've ever seen <laughs> it is not it's a very large book but it's called what it's, it's not called, the, i've read the no, bible it's called the case for christ the by, case by for Lee christ Strobel, which i it's yes. highly recommend it. I, maybe i'll have, by the time that i read that book you'll be back here on the next show i'll be full-on follower of jesus it's, it's, at that point it's a high we'll possibility uh are you uh what religious preference are you when you hear the term follower of christ jesus uh, how do you interpret that i would consider myself pretty naive to much of that. Um, Growing up, I was not exposed to any religion Mm -hmm. at all by my family or anything. So for me, it was something as I became adult, um, I just spent the most of my uh, earlier years just building my career, you know, outside of this career, (laughs) but just like really moving towards other things in life that I never, I've never even... Like, I honestly would consider myself pretty ignorant to it that I I don't. Okay, well, you're going to, Ruslan drops dimes, Mm -hmm. drops gems nonstop, (laughs) so he's going to do that. And are you a devout Christian, follower of Jesus? What are you? I I am a follower of Jesus. Um, I went down to, I went to school right down the street from here, Christian school. So Mm -hmm. I grew up, um, I grew up in a Christian home. Respect. Um, Natalia, you've been very quiet. Anything that that we should know about you or anything the audience should know? (laughs) Um, well, first, before I say anything, make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, share. This is going to be a sick podcast. That's the first thing before I can announce anything. Um, and for me, I grew up also in a, um, Catholic home. I went to private school, so Jesus was definitely relevant in my life. Um, and yeah, he still is pretty relevant in my life too. So we'll tell him we said hi. Respect. I'll tell him on Sunday. Um, but she, to echo what Natalia had to say. 
If you have not subscribed to the channel, this is not Valuetainment. This is VT Money, separate channel. So we talk money, dating, relationships, lifestyle. That's the channel here. So go ahead and hit that. Um, but also, Natalia, you're going to be reading a lot of the super chats throughout the episode. Yes, we actually had so, one super chat. It was a, just a donation. What do we get? Dollars. He just said we. He just said. You are amazing. A little emoji. To you. Uh, yeah. Well, to all of us. Oh, it thank you. To all of us. Well, give him a shout out. Amazing. Who was that? This was. Ooh. Ooh, we got a broken phone. It's all right. This was Nasir Al Mula. Oh, yeah. He's one of my subscribers. Nice. Amazing. Yeah. Nasir and in the, the house. And the real Femme Sapien said she loves your nails. Well, we know <laughs> Ali, the real Femme Sapien. She's a stud. We're going to talk about her a little bit on this episode when we reference some housewife stuff. But as you can see, if you're listening to the episode, we're going to give you a shout out. So give us a little super chat so we can read your comments. By the way, it's not about the five ten dollars although we appreciate it. Yeah. We want your feedback. That's what we want from you. So go ahead, like, subscribe, boom, super chat. Now let's get into the episode. So we got to start with our friend Allie here on the left, only because this was on CNN, an article that I saw on you. And I said, uh-oh, courtesy of our friend Greg Dinkin. I'm sure he's listening. <laughs> let's pull this ring thing up right now. But I want to get a little perspective on OnlyFans. I think that OnlyFans gets kind of a bad name. Mm -hmm. All right? And maybe we can kind of set the record right. Um, Ruslan kind of said, thirst trap times capitalism. And you're like, no, that's, that's exactly what it is. So here's the lovely Ali Ray. Um, by the way, put everybody's YouTubes and descriptions in uh, the commentary below, in the mm -hmm. description below. Uh, but this was the CNN interviewed you, I believe, correct? Yeah, they did. <laughs> so set the tone here. Well, let me set this up. So this former ICU nurse makes 200 grand a month from... OnlyFans, all right? This was, I think, at the time, last October, when OnlyFans was... August, yeah. Last mm -hmm. August, contemplating reversing their decision on more risque content, thanks to, I don't know, freedom of speech, First Amendment. I don't know what mm -hmm. it was. They reversed their decision. Probably more money. More thirst trapping, as mm -hmm. Ruslan likes to say. <laughs> but apparently, you went from, again, being an ICU nurse dur during COVID, arguably the hardest job on the planet at that point, yeah. to being one of the more disrespected jobs on the planet, I would have to say. Uh, so we'll get into that. And apparently, because, you know, we talk money on here, you were going from making about 84 grand a year to making six figures a month. Very quickly, too. Yeah, it was, um, it was, it's been crazy. It's been life changing. Yeah, we're going to get into that. So let's talk about that. What made you say, all right, I'm done with the nurse thing. I've been doing it for X amount of years. Time to go full time with the OnlyFans. Let's walk us through that. Well, I... I have to stop that first because I, I didn't choose to leave nursing realistically on my own. Um, I was kind of pushed out. Um, I was discovered by some nurses at the hospital who found out that I was on Instagram. They found out that I had an OnlyFans and brought that to our management's attention. And once they found out about it, it was just meetings back and forth. I was mm -hmm. devastated. Um, so they snitched on you. Absolutely. Mm. Um, so you know was, how they say, you know. <laughs> snitches get stitches, but you're in the hospital. Right. So, <laughs> oh, I mean, shit's going down. Like, you I know how to give stitches here, people. Yeah, okay. it, was, it was really bad um, to go from one of the most respected nurses on the unit. I, mm -hmm. I was very senior. I was getting my doctorate. I was just about to graduate um, to do research for neonatal, um, I, you know, for care. And it would just, I went into a meeting and they slid across the table pictures of me that they should not have had with sharpied out parts and said you know this has become a distraction on the unit and if mm. you continue you have to leave and it that's at that point I obviously made the decision to leave after many months but it was so toxic of an environment just like so emotional all the time I, I hated it I was like why are these people out to get me so bad um, and so then I did choose to leave at that point but it was an ultimatum it was I really it probably wasn't legal what they did looking back, um, but I, I didn't ever. What was the ultimatum exactly? Delete it or leave. And I delete the only fans. Yeah. And I felt like, you know what, even if I delete this right now, this is not going to change what these people think about me now. They don't you know, it's already a distraction. So I at that point, I mean, I was making so much money still working full time as a nurse. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of money. Um, and. I never, I don't, I would have left nursing, but I don't think I would have did it then. And I don't like the way I was put out, but yeah, it, that's how it all went down. So would you have still stayed a nurse and on OnlyFans? 100%. I, I mean, even yeah. though you're printing money on OnlyFans, you were still got up, done the whole I did. deal I, with COVID, yeah. you would have done it. I was making probably like $75,000 a month still working full time as a nurse, like 
no joke. And it didn't even phase me. Like, I just went up and got to work. It was like I had all this money rolling in elsewhere, but it never felt permanent. It always felt like, I don't know if <laughs> this is going to stick around. And I just, I like I said, I just got my doctorate. I was actually going to University of Western Australia to do, I had a full ride and everything to do research for neonates. And that, that was what my immediate plan, which was, was a part of the reason why I didn't mind leaving um, the hospital because I was like, well, I'm going to Australia. I'm about to mm-hmm. use my doctorate now. And um, we didn't end up doing that. Things changed very quickly, very quick. Let me ask you a question. Then I want to get everyone's perspective on this. By the way, Natalia, do you have that video that um, Francisca sent you? Check on Slack for that. We'll pull that up when you're ready. But um, you, why did you even start OnlyFans? If you said you liked your job, you were making money, mm-hmm. you were happy, you've been doing nursing for how long? Nine years. Mm-hmm. So nine years, so almost a decade. What's What made you say, you know, and you're married, I met your husband. Mm-hmm. You must have had a conversation before you started OnlyFans, I assume. Mm -hmm. And he said, honey, go for it, right? I mean, walk us through that. I think a lot of people think it's just me. It's actually my husband and I's OnlyFans. So he's not the innocent one there. But um, what started... So you guys do it together. Yes, all of our content's together. And it's sexual content Mm -hmm. together, Mm -hmm. fully going at it. Yeah. Boom. (laughs) So this was... Walk us through that conversation. (laughs) Who started it? Well, okay, so... Like me, who said, hey... There's a thing called OnlyFans. Who was the first person that said that? <laughs> Honestly, I think it was during everything was the lockdowns, okay? And yeah. I had I had an Instagram with about 3,000 followers. I would do beer reviews. I love craft beer. Mm-hmm. And people used to always say, you guys got to start an OnlyFans. You got to start an OnlyFans. And we used to ignore it. We ignored it for years. And then that story came out about Bella Thorne making a million bucks in six hours. Boom. And yeah. I was like. Oh, that's the site they're talking about. Well, we didn't even realize what it was. Mm. And when we went on there and started kind of, you know, toying around with it and, and signing up, I posted a couple pictures of us. And within, I mean, it was like that. It, it, money just poured in. And so then it became very hard to turn a blind eye to it. And so yeah. you you kind of evolve in, in, you know, what people are asking. or And honestly, the way that our content is, people look at it as like porn or this or that. Whatever. Sorry, but whatever it is, it... It's literally just a case. We're just doing what we normally do and what everyone else is doing. We literally just put a camera in the room. Wow. Like nothing else is scripted or changed. It's just a camera in the corner. And how long have you been married? Uh, 20 years. Okay, gotcha. And you've been married how long? I've been married coming on two years. Two years. And you've been with your girl for? We've been together 18. Married 18, for 14. Married for 14. So you're hearing these numbers. Rebecca. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you've got a full-time job. Yeah. Your husband, from what I understand, he's, he's a worker. He's yeah. a smart guy. Mm-hmm. The number she's talking about, six figures a month, are, yeah. as you're hearing this, are you saying, honey, I mean, <laughs> I mean maybe we kind of, I don't know. Thoughts? Um, no, absolutely not. Um, that would never cross my mind. And if I said that to my husband, he would say, go take a walk, go take a lap. You're delusional. Hmm. So yeah. no <laughs> amount of money would it make you reconsider what you're doing? No. Because she has a point here. It's not like she's... Going out with other men or doing other, being infidelity, you know, yeah. or anything like that. It's with her husband. Like she said, to use her words, we're doing everything we typically would do. The only difference is we turn the camera around, turn it on. Well, to me, and this goes back to my faith too, right? You are defiling the marital bed. And I know to you as a, like to you, you're not a Christian. So that's not a part of your value system. But for me, that's essentially saying look, our marital bed, our relationship is now out here for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. And I'm, yeah, I'm not, I would never do that. It's not something you would do. Not at all. Ruslan, I already know you're going to say no, so I'm not going to ask you the exact same question. (laughs) But what, like, I don't want to turn this into like sinners and saints. Yeah. But it's almost like she's using religion as like a no. According to my religion, can't do that. That's totally cool. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, you as a follower of Christ, what would the Bible or Christianity have to say about what? Because again, not cheating on her husband, all she's doing is turning on a camera. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I would say, according to Scripture, <laughs> mm-hmm. if you are a follower of Jesus, the standard, the expectation is that intimacy is reserved for one man, one woman mm-hmm. relation, marriage, covenantal mm-hmm. marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that is that's the line, right? That's got that, that God designed this amazing thing called sex. That's phenomenal. It's incredible. It's one of the best blessings out there. Mm-hmm. And what we tend to do 
as people is we tend to take things and kind of like throw our own spin on it, right? Mm -hmm. We we pervert something that's intended to be good. Mm -hmm. Food is good. What do we do? We make highly caloric, dense, compressed, fried food with as many calories and it tastes great and it's yummy and it's and it's fulfilling. But what happens if you just eat processed fast food? You're going to get overweight and you're not going to like the results you get. And so I think most things that we're talking about are in the category of this is a this is a, an amazing gift from God. Food, sex, alcohol, whatever, fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. And we take them and we 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 distort them, we pervert them from the original design. And so I think it's less about her, you and your husband. I think it's who is the demographic that's consuming this Mm -hmm. and is it adding a net positive to human flourishing Mm -hmm. or is it reinforcing dysfunctional behavior in a lot of men who are maybe becoming more socially isolated? I mean, I'm sure we're familiar with a lot of the incel community now, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so like, is this causing a man who's consuming this, not just you, but in general, right? Is this causing them to view women as image bearers of mm-hmm. God is this causing them to have a healthy expectation of what sex is? I have no idea how elaborate and uh, advanced <laughs> your guys's videos it's very are, educational. right? Uh, <laughs> and, and so, like, is this causing them to have healthy expectations? Because as a, as a kid that grew up with a ton of sexual trauma, mm-hmm. um, be, and then got addicted to porn, I had really distorted views of what sex was supposed to be. Yeah. You're saying that you did? Yeah, I did. Same what here. you? You too? Yeah. So yeah. you both are Christians, followers of Jesus, and you both admit. That you had porn addictions? Yes. Yeah. Walk yeah, us through yeah. that, bro. Well, as a kid, I was sexually abused um, f- about the age of seven or eight, and that exposed me to, to, to porn. And so then as I got the internet, it was like, oh, this is this I is a jackpot, right? buddy. Right? So like, I got a computer to like start producing music, and I did, but then it also opened me I'm up like, to- I'm like, start producing right. music. <laughs> and so yeah. that that was a stronghold over, over my life. Like That was an addiction for, for a while, and I carried some of that. What as, do you consider a porn addiction? What does that mean? When you don't want to do something, but you do it anyway. Mm-hmm. When I go, ah, I feel convicted. I know this doesn't help. This doesn't help how I view women. Mm-hmm. This doesn't help how I uh, view my own sexuality. This doesn't help- anything this this causes shame and i can't control it mm-hmm. i think when you can't control something it's an addiction mm-hmm. right when you when you it controls you it right? controls you, you. Control it. and that, yeah. and that's definitely what it was and so then getting married and and uh my wife was you know she wasn't she didn't have a bunch of sexual partners and so like then taking that into marriage so definitely so i'm speaking as someone as on the other side of being freed from this mm-hmm. the majority of men i'm dealing with this isn't causing a net positive to their life. God. This is yeah. this is this is hurting them. This is um, in, inhibiting. And, and I guess the the the, the, the pros of of of, of uh, OnlyFans is that at least the creators are in control. Yeah. Historically, porn has Ooh. been really bad. Really bad. Yeah. A lot of overlap with human trafficking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really toxic stuff. So I think the only a positive I would say is like, well, mm-hmm. at least the creators are in control. At least, the, as far as I know, this isn't connected to uh, sex trafficking where there's pimps yeah. in mm-hmm. porn. Like that's right. a, that was mm-hmm. a real thing yeah. ten years ago. So, but 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 I would just still I would ask, man, the dude that's looking at this stuff, is this causing him? to add a net positive to society? Is this causing him to be, or is this causing him to insulate deeper, to hmm. uh, grow more dysfunctional, have more issues with his mental health? Um, and so that, that that's how I would that's how I would look at it on a macro scale. Mm-hmm. And then I think from the creation of said content, uh, then you, you filter that out. So it's less about what you and your husband do in, in, in your guys' home. Mm-hmm. It's more like, do, does it distort and does it add a net mm-hmm. positive to society? And I think it's hard to justify that. It Why don't does. you add in? Because like, tell us what you were dealing with and yeah. then how you've uh, yeah, religion so, or your husband have helped this problem. So um, my my I was exposed to it at a very young age as well. Um, porn, porn, yeah. Okay. Um, and I've actually talked about this openly on my channel as well. And I was the ugly duck, duckling, right? I was the I was the ugly kid at school. So I was looking at it as how can I get love like this is my idea of love right this this person you know as and as a child you don't know what this actually is right your brain hasn't developed enough to understand fully grasp what you're watching and what you're seeing and so for me I thought well this is what people in love do right Mm. and yes it is sex is a beautiful thing uh, in the in the context of marriage, 
Um, but I kept going down the rabbit hole and it get it kept getting worse and worse and what I was exposed to should have never been allowed to be filtered through my eyes. At what age? Like 13, 14. Wow. Yeah. And when you say is, getting worse and worse and worse, what like, was getting worse? I, I was seeking out more and more perverse pornography. Mm. And this happens, right? The it's the dopamine hit, it hits you, and then that's like, okay, that that was good for a short period of time. Now I got to re up, right? It's just like a it's just like a a, a substance abuse. Mm-hmm. The more you get exposed to it, the more that you want to get more and that's not fulfilling your needs anymore. So what is going to fulfill those needs? And so you know, I got counseling. I had to really, I had to really restructure my brain and understand like, one, I, yes, I have responsibility in this, but at the same time, it's like, okay, let's rework how relationships actually are. Women are not objects. We're, you know, like, like Rusan said, we're image bearers of God. And Mm -hmm. so, for me and my husband, my husband, my husband has talked about this as well. Also addicted to porn, and um, we, you know, we have. You guys these were dealing tools. with the exact same problem. Yes, but in prior separate, to you guys, yes, met? yes, okay. yeah, prior. Um, and so there's tools and resources out there for people like uh, Covenant Eyes, but you know it's really hard, and you have to really come to terms with this. Like this happening in my room as a child isolating myself and this happens to women too it's not just men um and a lot of younger a lot of young women get into this very early in their lives so you know it happens to both people and luckily I got my situation (laughs) figured out and the right therapy about it but yeah it's it's very scary Uh, I want to get get over to Allie before I want to (laughs) give Allie the final word to cue up that video and then we'll play that out on the other side of this there's a video. You know, we don't need this right now, but um, why don't you respond to them and then we'll, we'll get into the next topic. Yeah, I, I definitely could understand how I don't have or haven't been even exposed to the same value system and what your you know beliefs are and what things you do. And I can understand why you within your personal life would not want to do that. I, I never really looked at it from the I know like obviously porn can be an addiction for some people. There's a lot of things in life that, you know, obviously people can become addicted to and you never want to contribute to that. But then I guess the argument could be, well, then I guess you could be mad at every bar, you know what I mean, in America and liquor store because there's a lot of people that are addicted to alcohol. Um, And I'm not comparing the two. I, I, again, I'm speaking as I've, I've never had a porn addiction, so I don't understand how evil or how much that can deep that can go and that need for that. But I guess when I when you were talking, something that came up that had me thinking is, is there anything, is it specifically um, outside of just uh, sex should be within your own marriage, your marital bed is how you mm-hmm. referenced it, referring to it. Um, is there anything positive of the type of porn that I'm creating or that it's to, it's to people that are married just showing their intimacy? It's not, like, is, does it go as far as... Um, like I said, outside of the belief of the marital bed, just in general with the the negativity and of the porn of it being like BDSM type stuff, or is there levels to that that you find are more dangerous where maybe what I'm doing may not be contributed into such that negative way that maybe people may even be looking. I mean, I know personally on my own um, subscription site, I have a lot of people who come to me for marital advice. Like I wish I could have spicier sessions with my wife or I wish, you know, like you know, I feel like you guys look so connected. I love how you guys laugh when you're doing things like they kind of, I, you know, want some of that and are kind of looking for ways to see that maybe they've never had that influence. Is there any positive value you think in the type? I, so I'm not familiar exactly yeah, with what so you I'm do. So are you guys doing like tutorials? Of the, no. <laughs> <laughs> of the, of the, this is how it's going to be. this here. What no. is um, no, we just, uh, it's just literally our intimate life. Like it's not staged or scripted. It's not BDSM. It's not whip chain, something yeah. like that. It's literally a married couple having sex. Like it's yeah. just, um, but yes, we have full on sex tapes. Like we don't. Well, let me ask you, Ali, do you know who is watching? Like, do you know yeah. your demographics? Like, all right, it's. 18-year-old boys in Missouri. Like, do you know who's watching? 
Um, I would say my average is anywhere from 25 to 45 uh, okay. men. Obviously, women, too. I have a lot of women. Like, do you know lot the of, breakdown demographics? I don't know exactly, but I do know I've seen a lot, ever since I was on Dr. Phil and I came back, um, a lot of couples. A ton of more couple, couples that actually their profile states they are a couple. And they're co- couples and they're watching you and your husband. Together. Well, mm-hmm. that's a different yeah, scenario I was, I was right there. Say, I think there's obviously a spectrum. Yeah. Yes. Right? <laughs> so like, hey, this is a couple. They're in their own home. That's different than some of the more stuff on the fringes and the exploitive stuff. I don't yeah. know if Rebecca yeah. would disagree mm-hmm. with me. I So so there's obviously a, a, a spectrum there that yeah. I, I, I wouldn't say more or less positive. I would simply say I, uh, I, I to, to your alcohol parallel, mm-hmm. right? Like, I don't drink alcohol. However, if we go out and have a uh, have some dinner. He has a drink. I'm not mad at him for having a drink, yeah, but I would never own a bar. Yeah, because I don't want to add to that. Gotcha. That institution and that mm-hmm. system, and then everything that goes along with that, and then the ridiculous margins, mm-hmm. and then the possible <laughs> right because the alcohol is crazy at bars, and then the Got possibility it. of someone driving home after yeah. well, you know, like so. I just wouldn't want anything to do with that institution mm-hmm. as a whole. Even though I think if people want to sit down and have a glass of wine, yeah. that's fine. And my mother is also an alcoholic, so there's also that layer on top yeah. of it. And so I would say, yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, I'm, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to participate. Um, so, so then I would. So the alcohol being like in in a marriage covenant, I think whatever you want to do in your bed is totally fine. Yeah. I, I would say the macro of like is it adding to a net positive? And then two, I would say there was a you know guys, you guys know what Abba and Preach is? Yeah. Yes. So Abba and Preach just did a video a couple weeks ago. Of another YouTuber who was doing these like $500, you can talk to me. Mm -hmm. And someone called in and was telling, this is a crazy video, I should look at it. And someone's calling and telling them, and he was being real weird. Like the dude who called in, they're reacting to this video. He's being real weird. And he's like, he kept pressing him and he found out that his mom was an OnlyFans model. Mm -hmm. And this 15 year old was getting brutally bullied. Yeah. And then ex- being exposed to his own mom's stuff, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like and 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 again, what do you mean exposed to his own mom's stuff? Like his yeah. friends were so like we're showing him. Dude. Oh Jesus! Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I, th- I think so. Now we're talking because teenagers like, are already cruel to begin with. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. eighth and, graders specific are the worst yeah. kids in the world. And, 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 I was one of them in eighth grade. And so this, <laughs> so of this, course this kid, they're gonna do stuff like this that. This kid was 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 calling into this other YouTuber, yeah, mm-hmm. and was considering deleting himself. Yes. You know, and Abba and Preach's commentary is like, wow, this is nuts. You don't understand the, the ramifications. But then it was, they were also saying, like, that's whack that a YouTuber would then make a video about this private yeah, conversation yeah. with this mm-hmm. dude. Certainly. You know, so I think there's also that side of it. I, do you guys have kids? We do. We have three. Mm-hmm. Three. And what are their ages? 19, 18, and 12. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So how do they feel about it? Well, um, we actually... Yeah, they know. I was going to say. know what's like, going on <laughs> in the champagne. You said 19... <laughs> 18 and 12. Oh, these are grown-ups at this point. The two older, yeah, yeah. the two older. Oh, yeah, but yeah. yeah. When I was, uh, when I left nursing, we took the older two to dinner, um, a lot of people have opinions about this, but the reality is we are a very close family, like very much like always been open to each other about things. We try to be honest with our kids. And our fear at that point is if these nurses found me online, mm-hmm. well, okay, well, yeah. I don't need my boys finding this online. Oh, they're 19, 18 year old boys. Oh, they're all boys. All oh, three man. boys. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so um, we took the older two to dinner and sat them down. And I mean, just like, obviously, big drink back first. Like, okay. <laughs> it was like a drink, a smoke, a shot. All right. Uh, okay. Husband's looking at me like, you go. I'm like, you go. Uh, so, so who eventually had to break the news to them? I you did, or your husband? I, I, well, we were together, all four of us. We left the little one. He wasn't with us. And I just, I told him, I said, look, you know, I've, I've, I've been doing like, you know, I have an Instagram and I have a social media. And I'm kind of like etching like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, you know, I'm modeling for Rihanna now because I was doing a lot of uh, stuff from Rihanna. Rihanna's um, lingerie line, and I was like, and then, and then literally my middle was like, you're on OnlyFans, aren't you? And I was like, first of all, in my head, I'm like, thank God that he took those words out of my mouth, because mm-hmm. I didn't, my fear was if I said it, he wouldn't know what it was, and then I have to explain what OnlyFans was, I was like, I don't want to go through any of that, so he's like, all right, well, and they both kind of like, there was some initial questions, I think they were more at ease once they knew, like, okay, this isn't something mom's like doing one-off, like, mm-hmm. dad, you're involved too, and you know. <laughs> And it was kind of like, <laughs> By the way, how, how long ago was this conversation? Literally one year to the, like, wow. yeah, it was. So this is very new. This is, yeah, this is yeah. one year ago, last June is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, it was. Okay. So it was a very awkward conversation, but we walked away from that. Um, just kind of like, all right, you doing your, and it's like, it's not like the topic of dinner conversation, but it, yeah. it has been somewhat. 
it has been a relief for us to know, like, they know, they don't know details, but they know what we're doing. They know, they're old enough to read between the lines. And it feels a little bit better knowing they don't have to find this out, you know, secondhand or mm-hmm. through someone else. Um, their their friends have been fairly respectful about it. They haven't had any problems. They're obviously out of school. They're old enough. Um, they're also the type of boys that are very much um, confident and sure within themselves, and they have been able to debate this if it came up. I think there was one incident where some kid said something to one of our boys. Is that friends. a concern of yours that, like, like what they said. Well, how about the 12 year olds? Right. So, the 12 year old, obviously, I don't feel, we feel like age appropriateness is important. And obviously, we don't feel he's at any age to know the details of what we're doing. Um, he knows that I do something on social media. He knows that mom might even, you know, have an Instagram where she's, you know, in a bikini or something. I think that's the extent. But honestly, with him, we've been far more sensitive and just kind of letting it lead. We homeschool him. He has a private teacher, mm-hmm. so we don't say, have the yeah. issue. At Do school. your kids know that you're hot? <laughs> <laughs> no, meaning like mm-hmm. they your know, kids know that you're very milfy. They, I mean, we've <laughs> is that a had, word? <laughs> I'm just this is obvious stuff kids here, guys. Know. Kids know. They, kids know. They, Do they, they know? know. They, I mean, they, like, we've had people come up to us in public, which is always awkward. But um, you know, yeah. So. so the, it, it almost seems it's like, it's awkward, it's weird, but the money's too damn good. But it's not weird with our older boys. Like, it's very You much, said when you sat down for dinner, it was super weird. That was weird. awkward. That was awkward. Of course it is. <laughs> but once they've known... But the point is, the money's too damn good. It's... Listen, all these kids call... Like, if you were making paid. $500 a never, month, never. you wouldn't do this. Never. For 5000 a month, you wouldn't do this. Mm-hmm. But for a hundred grand a month... Or more. I'm in. Yeah. Sign me up. Can I ask so it you? Does, so it does come down to the money so at some point. It's hard to yeah. turn that away when you're a nurse working 16-hour shifts. I missed all their hockey games a lot. I had student loans growing. Mm-hmm. The kids caught. I mean, it just, yeah. I mean, the money is, no one, someone would be lying if they said the money didn't have anything to do with Respect. it. So, so two questions. Go. I'm sorry. I don't mean to jump, know, take your part. So question number one, would you be okay if they had a similar pan-social relationship with an OnlyFans model, if they were married with the OnlyFans, or just no, 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 no. sorry, relation uh, pan social is like through the internet, uh, like you have pan social. Oh, if relationship they consume that, if content? they consumed content of an OnlyFans model, uh, would you be okay with that? I think there's initially. I don't. I mean, it, I wouldn't have a problem. I don't think it's any different than DMing a girl on Instagram. To be really honest, Instagram's got some pretty racy stuff now. Mm-hmm. What would concern me is them becoming into a situation where they were unhealthily thought like there was something truly between this girl or were, you know, being led or manipulated anyway. Those would be my concerns. But that's any concern that I would have with them on anybody on social media. Right. Um, so but, you would be okay with them consuming OnlyFans oh, content regularly? Yeah. I mean, it, okay. it's not not mine, but it, sure, sure, obviously. Sure, sure. But like, by the way, just to qualify that, you're talking about your 18 and 19-year-olds, yeah. adults. Yeah, I mean, they're, not they're the, boys. Not the 12-year-old. Not the 12-year-old, yeah. Okay. That that would be um, a big problem. And I, I mean, right. especially. So there's a there's a age limit, restrictions, you know. Absolutely. I don't PG-13 think, for I just, a reason. I just yeah, want to say that um, the stats say that pornography starts at 11 years old especially for boys and so even though you do homeschool them and i'm not trying to give you like advice on how to raise your kids but the exposure is still there even though you know it's not they're not getting exposed to it at school or through friends I, i know from like doing the research is that there are private messages that get sent out emails marketing to these kids through social media and through these things and so or these different platforms um even text right and so yes you can shield them to a certain extent but eventually they're going to find out Mm -hmm. um and to that point too i would say your your two older boys they already had experienced you as a mom right they've seen you as mom Mm -hmm. nurse all that stuff and so as the 12 year old grows up, he's now living in a completely new lifestyle. Well, not really. Our lifestyle, I'm still mom, still making breakfast. Dinner. There's nothing different except mom has not gone 16 hours. Mm. She just might go to her room or, you know, in the <laughs> studio or wherever I may go. Okay. Um, there's no difference in how I mother or raise the kid, my kids. Mm-hmm. They've, um, it's been Are you, pretty. Do you think that you're a better mother now? Is that what you're saying? I would argue I am. Because you're more active in their lives? Oh, I'm, I'm there for everything. I'm there every day for him. I have 
as much time as I'd like, I can take two weeks off if I want and just spend it with my kids. I think I'm clear headed. I'm not, you know, work, mm-hmm. like I said, working 16 hour nights. Um, that's, yeah. that was the reality. No, of because it. obviously everyone's going to be like, she's a mom and judge her and oh my God. But like, you're basically saying, Hey, look, I get it. I've had difficult conversations with mm-hmm. my kids. It's not exactly the most normal relationship, but look, I'm making a lot more money. I'm there for my kids. There's some upside to what I'm doing. It's not all shame and bad. Like I've yeah. processed this again with my husband. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I'm defending you or defending them. Or I'm just saying that there. it's one thing I've learned in, in any position, whether it's, you know, guns or abortion or church, school, whatever. There's always a gray area. It's not everything yeah. is black and white. So Correct. do you think that you're becoming uh, my initial question is, would you say that you're now a better mother because of this? I would say that I'm a better mother. I'm actually, I want to rephrase that. I would say I'm the mother that I always wanted to be. And that might sound ironic, but the mother that I always envisioned myself being prior to going to nursing school and becoming a nurse was hands-on, there every day, picking mm-hmm. up from school, dropping off, you know, dinner, lunches, hockey. Um, and that's just things that was not able to do when you're a nurse like that. And so I'm I'm able to be the mother that I always wanted to be now. And that, that means a lot to me. And you, you can't put a price tag on that. I mean, to be honest... For me, that's the most value. One thing I've learned since I've come into wealth is that freedom in your time is worth far more than what your bank account states. And that, to me, is the biggest part of this. It doesn't matter what that number says. The fact Mm -hmm. that I don't have to get up and leave my kids if I don't want to, it just speaks volumes. Time is the most precious commodity. All right, let's queue up this video because I want to get your thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. Um, Before I play this, would you say that you're a better wife now? I think my I, I'm the same with a wife. I've always same been wife. a good wife. I've always okay. my relationship's always been wonderful. All with, right, let's play this video. We'll pick up on the side. Make sure the volume's on. But by the way, let me let me tee this up so just we don't just start playing it. I was invited recently uh, to something called the CME, the Conference of Masculine Excellence, and I went down there and I interviewed. That's where I met Allie. Mm-hmm. I met Donovan Sharp, sure. who um, put the thing on. Shout out to Rolo Tomasi who invited me down there. Shout out to that whole community, Fresh and Fit. Red Pill Community, Manosphere, they had me down there. I've kind of, you know, tiptoed around this kind of stuff. But since then, I'm like, all right, I, I like what these guys are doing. But I asked a million questions. So don't think I went there to ask this one question. This was one of the questions regarding OnlyFans. And this is our, these, ma- uh, these males' responses. Go ahead. We're having technical difficulties. Bear with us, please. You guys should like this video and subscribe (laughs) and drop a super chat immediately. Thank you, Ruslan. Is it because we're playing it off Slack? Um, No, I don't think so. I downloaded it when I'm done with it. I have way more questions. (laughs) <laughs> oh, we're gonna get, by the way the entire episode is not going to be about only I'm in the lion's den no not at all we're going to get we're going to cover an array of topics hey, I but did Dr. Phil I could do this oh really how was your experience with Dr. Phil it was actually very pleasant really? I was that was pumped for that one I was like okay I got this only, I was so worried okay so here we go and we'll get back to Dr. Phil turn up the volume if you can and there we go our only fans girls wifey material absolutely not Absolutely not. Hell not. No. No. <laughs> like recreational use only. Absolutely not. I would never wife him up. I rock around with him for a little while. Wifing, no. She's getting naked for a camera. She belongs to the streets. <laughs> you cannot wife these girls, man. Or whoever's watching this, you just got to stay away from them. If she's giving me some money, man, you can show your titties. You can show your boobs. I'm down with it. Just give me some of the money. What is wifey material and, and what's the reason they're not? Because when you think of a wife, you think of somebody that's somewhat conservative, someone that is exclusive for you. But the minute she starts talking anything about marriage or whatever, it's like, oh, of course not, honey. She's going She's going to be a reflection of you. And, and if she's posting herself nude online, that's a reflection of you. That's a reflection of your leadership. She's exposing her body to multiple men or she's sleeping around with multiple men. And I'm wifing that? Uh, so no. 
Okay. Anyway, subscribe to Value Tamer right there. So, <laughs> what if we're together? That, I mean, that's okay. Yeah, I, yeah exactly. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Not to defend, it, that it makes it slightly different. Yeah, hundred percent. You're you're doing it with your husband. They're talking about meeting a new girl and wifing them. Yeah. yeah. Totally. But what would your response be to these men, just so they understand your position, or even only fans girls' position? Yeah, I, I actually might be a little more aligned with them than you think. I think uh, from the outside, if you are someone who's already doing this and you're going to look to marry them, it, it could be an issue because if that, especially if they're con- wanting to continue to do that, I don't know that that is ready for wifey material yet. Tell us why, though. But you uh, do you do OnlyFans, so are you a, a contradicting yourself? <laughs> well, I do OnlyFans with my husband, and mm-hmm. we've been married, you know, 19 years prior to us even contemplating doing something like that. and I would have never done this um, without even his blessing like if he was mm-hmm. like are you out of your mind I would have been like yeah I am I'm sorry <laughs> so, <laughs> you know I'm crazy so t- I-, I totally get that you have a husband so talk you have the camera yeah talk to guys out there about <laughs> okay. why they should or shouldn't wife up an OnlyFans an OnlyFans model okay well my first concern would be that if they're doing financially well on there uh, it's quite difficult to turn that funnel of money off and it I, if they weren't willing to do that, to turn that off in order to for marriage, then I would call that a major red flag. Um, that would be one concern. I also feel like it's an area that maybe they may venture back to. Or if you have a problem with that going into a marriage or even in anything, if you already have a disagreement about something that serious, like I don't want children versus I want children, like if something like that kind of debate, I just don't think it's a good idea going into anything like that. But um, I'm not saying it's anything to do with like, oh, you shouldn't wife them because it's trashy or it's wrong by no means. But I just think people that are in this industry that are doing and working it as a business will probably want to continue that. I, I would imagine it's not something that, I mean, I guess you could just turn it off if, if they wanted to get married. But yeah, it'd be weird. And what would your advice be to, because you're 35, 30, 38, 38, looking good. <laughs> Um, but you started this when you were 37. Yeah. What would your advice be to an 18 or 21 year old girl who is going to start doing OnlyFans? The problem is, is you read stories like mine in the news. Oh my God, she's making three or four hundred k a month. It's like that is not the norm. Mm-hmm. That took. There is a lot more than just shooting some videos. I am a. I will own it. I am a marketing genius. Like I, I'm very good at what I do from a business perspective, and I am incredibly driven. Um, it's, there's so much more behind the scenes. And I think that there's a falseness out there that these girls think they're just going to get rich off this. And that okay. that's not. So other than just being hot, what, what does it take to be a successful OnlyFans girl? Um, well, for one, I, you know, like, I think there's a sense in general in social media, I think there's a sense of, there's a desire for realness. You know, we around so much fake, everything's filter, everything's this, that. And I definitely feel like one of the things that I've played off, I knew coming into this, they're not just there for boobs and buns i mean obviously there you can get that on twitter um it was more to that and so for me it was really building a community around me and who i am as a person as a wife um that was one aspect to me is is maintaining authenticity and being real not scripted not big production just owning it i was never afraid oh they're gonna know i'm married they're not gonna like my content never phased me uh that's one thing the other thing that i would say is I'm very good about diversifying my audience and amongst different things. Like I'm also a now a CEO. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a CEO of my, I made my own platform. And so I'm, I'm heavily in crypto. You know, I've also not just have one, one funnel stream of income. Mm. And I think that's obviously something important. Um, and then also a lot of things that I think a lot of people get really hung up on clout. You know, they get hung up on, Oh, I need this many followers or I need this. And I've never cared And in regards to how much money I'm making and the amount of people I have subscribing to me, my follower count doesn't even, you would never think. Um, But that's just something that for me, it's never been my focus. It's always been about providing value and giving feet, you know, building that community around me. As odd as it is in this industry, Mm -hmm. you would think, how do you build a community around, you know, that? Um, But I have, and it's it's just something that works for me. Um, Rebecca, you want to weigh in on this? No, I agree with a lot of what she said, Um, especially for girls trying to get into this. Mm -hmm. um, You know, they see her and they think, well, that's the rule. Like everyone that gets on OnlyFans, everyone that gets on Instagram is going to flourish and going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars per month and then, you know, be a billion or a millionaire. Mm -hmm. But that's also the thing, too. What you said is 
yes, you are a very intelligent woman. You said, I'm going to take what I'm making and then I'm going to invest in a company and I'm going to create a company off of that. A lot of people, they make fast money and fast money goes as, as yeah. quick as it comes, right? Um, and so, and we've seen this on YouTube as well. Like you mm-hmm. blow up really fast and then your content doesn't, you don't stay consistent with it and you fall off. And But the, the thing I will say about it too is that with social media in general, you always have to keep leveling up. And there's a certain point where it's like the how much level up do you have to get? How much time, effort, you know, money, all of that stuff do you have to pour into it for that return, right? What are you going to give up? Are you going to give up your family life? Are you going to give up, you know, uh, quality time, whatever you need, right? Or the money, you could not make as much money as someone else. Um, and so I think that's what people forget. It's not as easy. You can't just make all this money up front without consequences. Bruce, Lano, let me ask you, because um, you're like our local um, expert on Christianity. In-studio expert. Is there a difference between being... Um, a porn star, a stripper, an OnlyFans girl, like in the eyes of the Lord, how, you know, I th- I, th- I saw some stat that 50% of Christians watch porn, something like that, some crazy stat, I can pull it up. Yeah. But I think part of the problem I have with like Christianity or even the like uh, televangelists is like the judgment. I feel like it's very judgy. Yeah. That's just me. Mm-hmm. But she's a freaking nurse. She saves lives. She's a good mom. Good, good, you know, good wife. She happens to have sex on camera with her husband. <laughs> it's and makes a lot of money. Um, give me the good, bad, and ugly of what you're hearing. Because it's yeah. not all good, it's not all bad, and it's not all ugly. Well, first of all, you guys found the most conservative OnlyFans model. Yeah, I was <laughs> <gonna> say, <laughs> like, <laughs> She's like, yeah, I was telling two 19 year olds not to do it. Like, oh, you didn't say that. But yeah. Yeah. it was, it was there's, I think there was a lot of wisdom in what you did exactly. say uh, to that to that specific mindset. So, obviously, there's a spectrum. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if we're talking in the eyes of what, the, the, again, the standard is according to the scriptures, I think there's a standard there in terms of what is the human body designed for. Mm -hmm. And we usually revert to one of three things, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. So that tends to be the things that sell the easiest. Say those three things again. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life. So the lust of the eyes is sex. Lust of the flesh is I want to feel good, dopamine, you know, food, drugs, and pride of life. I want to feel like I'm the man, right? Mm-hmm. So, so th- those types of when it, whatever content that's, that reinforces one of those three things is usually going to be the stuff that pops off. And so, um, th- you know, I I love First Corinthians chapter five. And if you guys have ever read the book of First Corinthians, it's, it's one of the earliest books written in the New Testament. Paul's writing this church in Corinth, and this is about a decade after Jesus resurrects and he's writing this church. So churches are growing all over and there's this church and Paul's writing them. And he's like, man, like chapter one, you guys are doing great. Like keep going. <laughs> chapter two is like, yeah, you know, I'm glad I didn't baptize any of you. Cause some of you guys are kind of weird. <laughs> chapter three, man, you guys are pretty carnal and acting pretty fleshly. Chapter five, boom, Jerry Springer bombshell. There's a, you guys are doing something that not even the pagans do yeah. a dude in the church has his father's wife and you're okay with it and you're celebrating it. Okay. So anyone that's like, America's going to hell. <laughs> Chapter five of first Corinthians. That's the homework, right? <laughs> Gnarly stuff. So this dude is either smashing his stepmom or smashing his bio mom. And the church in Corinth knows about it. And not only did they know about it, he must've been of some stature or celebrity. They were okay with it. They were, he was still celebrated. And Paul goes on to tell him and he says, listen, I told you in my previous book, not to associate with people that were sexually immoral. I wasn't talking about people who aren't Christians. I wasn't talking about people in the world. I was talking about people in the church, Mm -hmm. right? Expel the wicked from among you, Mm -hmm. hand them over to Satan so that God would deal, you know, so so that hopefully he comes back. He says the world, God's going to deal with the world. You don't worry about judging the world. You judge those inside Mm -hmm. the church. The issue with Christianity, and I'm not sure if you, how much you would agree with this, is we've done the opposite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've held the Mm non-Christians to the standards of scripture. Mm -hmm. And then when pastors... When leaders, Mm -hmm. when people in the church misbehave, abuse, 
act immorally, cheat, lie, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life, want to be celebrities for Jesus, Mm -hmm. then we look the other way Mm -hmm. and we don't judge them. So we we have it backwards in a lot of ways. And so the standard is the standard. However, if someone's not wanting to live that standard, if somebody's not a follower of Jesus, what business is it of mine to judge them? Now, if they ask me, I'm going to proclaim the gospel. I'm going to tell them, hey, man, like God created us to be image bearers of God. That is good news. Sin enters the picture. We screw it up. It doesn't take a, a, a rocket scientist to look out in the world and say, there's some evil stuff. I got some some issues with me. And according to Jesus' standard, you look at a woman lustfully, you've committed adultery. You hate your brother, you've committed murder. You'll give an account for every unwholesome word that's came out of your mouth. The bar is set so high that it's not about behavior modification. It's not about do, do, do and keep these rules. It's about whether me, you, any of us, we don't rise up to the standard. Mm -hmm. God is too holy and too good. So what does God do? God being a good, loving God sends Jesus to live the life we couldn't live, to die to death we should have died on the cross, rises on the third day, and that creates a new pathway, and that is the good news, right? So it's not about like, I'm more morally superior. Mm -hmm. If I told you all my dirty laundry and all the stuff I've been through, I'm (laughs) I'm a scumbag, man. Like it's, but, but for the grace of God, but for the grace of God, there go I, right? Like, so it's, it's not a moral uh, superiority complex. It's saying, man, we're all jacked up, but I placed my faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when I placed my faith in Jesus, something supernatural happened. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden the things I used to love, porn, sexual immorality, hooking up with girls in high school, I felt very conflicted and convicted about those things. Mm-hmm. And all the things I used to hate, church, reading the Bible, right? <laughs> being around Christians, who I used to hate being around Christians. All of a sudden, I started being drawn to those things. Something supernaturally mm. happened in my heart. I think that is the good news. And so I think what happens is, though, that's never really fully articulated. And then we go on and we, we're projecting something. And a lot of times, it is that. We struggle with something, so we project it on the mm-hmm. world. And the world mm-hmm. is like, dude, I didn't, I didn't sign up to follow your Jesus. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I do believe that faith in Jesus leads to ultimate flourishing. I do believe that is the best way to live. Um, not as like a prosperity gospel, but as in like your heart will be changed and you will, you will enjoy more contentment and joy. Mm-hmm. So I do believe that. So with regards to this, my, my question would be, honestly, is there, uh, like, is there an exit strategy? Mm-hmm. One, is there a certain dollar amount you're hoping to hit? And then two, um, w- w- do you see yourself doing this indefinitely? And could this be re- redirected in a more, I don't know, educational route, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you and your husband, like, yo, we have this pop and sex life. Yeah. We <laughs> built this OnlyFans thing. Check this out. Now we're going to yeah. give you guys some game. Maybe we won't be on camera, but we'll do a YouTube channel and we'll provide value yeah. in terms of how this is, you know, hey, like, do you keep a schedule? Do you not keep a schedule? Mm-hmm. Do you, right? Like there was a lot of things that like me and my wife just didn't know. And like we got around more married couples and it was like, no, no, mm-hmm. you have to keep a schedule. I'm like, yes, schedule. Good. <laughs> it's on right? the books. Right? right? So, it's on the books. It, it's yeah. literally on my calendar. Not right? penciled. Right. So, and so that I would say like, one, is there an exit strategy? Is there a dollar amount? Sorry, I'm going on a tangent. No, you're uh, great. Uh, is there, is there like an exit strategy? It's like, man, 5 million. Or is there some point where like, okay, I'm just, uh, when I'm, 50 when i'm a grandma when i'm because your kids are gonna have kids within the next decade or so right and then three like could this be redirected in a way where maybe you're not on camera you know but it's but it's but it is still providing i guess some form of value in terms of an educational component yeah absolutely i mean it's not something i want to do for a long time and the great thing is i don't i hate to even say that i want to do because i don't have to do you know it's not like obviously we've made enough money now where i could probably stop working forever um but i definitely like building you know another business and moving into that avenue these are all in preparation there's a lot of things that i have in the works and pipeline that are preparing me for becoming something i like to take like just the i think about like my core um what value that i have outside of just great videos you know some the the things about me that i think can be a value to people not just in, in this industry but in general i mean i have i have come with a lot of experience in a lot of different areas of life and Um, You know, I'm also a veteran, too. I've I've dealt with that. I went through a lot of stuff when I was in the military as well. And I have a lot of childhood trauma, a lot of stuff. And so I think there's more to my story that, of course, the media will never. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That I know could be of a huge benefit that has led me to where I am today. So to answer that question, yes, there's an exit strategy. Um, That is the goal. It's not something I intend to do forever. And how many years do you see yourself doing this? Cause you've only been doing it a year and a half. What? Uh, yeah. Year and a half, two years, almost. So yeah. what's the, what's the ideal timeline? Two years, five years, 10 years. 
I foresee, I, I always ask, is there going to be a day where I want this wiped from the web? Like, is there going to be a day where I want these gone forever? And I, I don't foresee that. I think what would happen is my stuff would just become more cataloged and just historical to be purchased <laughs> mm-hmm. versus me doing this like continuously, you know, on a daily basis right now. I mean, it's, it's, I work 24 seven. Um, I literally work every day, all day. So it's, it's something like that. I definitely foresee slowing down and a lot of that's me. I don't hand things off. A lot of people at this level, I would say, honestly, 90% of women at this level, or I shouldn't say women creators at this level on OnlyFans, are not running their own pages anymore. They yeah. are 100% mm-hmm. auto-generated and have other people doing it. I know a girl in mm-hmm. the, um, I think it's, they have different payouts, right? So, mm-hmm. like, the best payout is, like, less than 1%. Like, meaning that's what OnlyFans is taking, point oh. No, one. that's your rank on the site. Okay, like, Wh- whatever the ranking is. Yeah. Explain that. So it's Point, really... No, no, before you do it, I know a girl who's like top, top, upper echelon. She has 15 people working for her, mm-hmm. responding, sending out things. Yeah. Like oh. She's got like a company working for... And she's one girl. You're looking at 10 people of work right here in between and me and And why don't you husband. outsource and have like all these girls? Um, for one, I don't think it's right. Um, the community is paying to chat with me and talk with me and that kind of thing. And I don't... I would never feel right about that. For two, I don't trust anyone to speak for me. I'm big about authenticity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think my community knows that, you know, I may not be able to respond back to you in five minutes like you get on someone else's page, but that's because it's a bot or it's somebody in Thailand who's running their page literally no that's or like not, a dude, yeah. or a dude. <laughs> or could be, i'm telling you that is true it's though. so true and oh so gosh. i i am you know between me and my husband you know he runs mm-hmm. a lot of the back end stuff no pun intended but he runs a lot of <laughs> the behind Shout the out scenes, to her husband. <laughs> a lot of stuff that goes yeah. on into this and um i think that's yeah i just i won't do that so i foresee myself this won't it's Got just it. a lot because yeah. a big a big chunk of it comes from the messages right i remember reading about yeah. the what is the name bad bad, bad baby, baby. Yeah. and i remember seeing when they broke it down and they said a big chunk of that is i guess through those messages what responding to the messages I guess, yeah and it's, they were saying yeah. how like there's impossible she would respond to all those messages well, so oh, it's, it's, impo- I wake it's up probably to, dudes yeah. natalia pull up the numbers here we're gonna let's let's Seriously. talk a little bit money right here let's yeah. transition to a little bit more um, but answer his question. We'll kind of go through these numbers. How does the money work, the yeah. messaging, the subscriptions? Break down the business model of a entrepreneur OnlyFans <laughs> content creator. So with uh, OnlyFans, you can have one or two pages. You have a free page or you have a subscription page or you have both. If you have a free page, everything you put on the wall, you can charge for. If you have a subscription page, you cannot have anything for sale on your page. They pay to get in. You can only sell through the DMs. That's how they're selling their videos through the DMs by hand. So it does go down in the DMs? For the most part. Okay. I could never sell my videos by hand in the DMs. I wake up to hundreds of messages like it's it's unreal. I could never do that on my own, so I do that through my free page. And what are the messages asking you or saying to you? Um... A lot of times, how, how's your fish doing? I mean, I have. A, I have hey, a I just got to know about your fish. I'm not, I got to know. For real, how's your new car? <laughs> um, I have koi what? fish. I have like, and I I put them on my Insta, my socials, like a, my community. Actually, a lot of it's just like, did you guys have fun at the Bruins game? Like, it's why just, do they care? That's I. That's really what like, I want to know. And it's, by it's, the way, it's the pansocial phenomenon. Is I, it pansocial? What is pansocial? Pansocial is when you follow streamers or yeah. influencers mm-hmm. and and you know so much about them mm-hmm. but they don't know you yeah. so you feel like they you f- they feel like a friend to you because I, I don't think our brains could tell the difference but they don't know you mm-hmm. so it creates this weird dynamic where you have thousands millions of people that feel like they yeah. know you because that you're in their living room yeah. right you're, yeah, you're they're, they're watching your stream or on their phone yeah, or, or on their you, phone yeah and so but you don't but but you don't know them and so it's a it's 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 a real big phenomenon with twitch streamers mm-hmm. and youtubers and, yeah. it, and it, it it has some consequences to it for I, sure. I love my community is amazing I mean, i can literally go on there and ask like hey i'm you know how do i put this bacteria in this pond to keep these i mean my they help like i just i have a great community i have very rare i think i've blocked five people my entire really? time i mean okay i got amazing. a crazy question <laughs> Because it, maybe it goes to the connection, this pansocial thing you're talking about. I'm not sure if you guys know this, but porn is free, yeah. as you guys understand. So porn. explain why someone would want to pay $12 a month or whatever. I don't know what the pricing are. Maybe you can elaborate on that. Versus, look, 
porn, you know, I'm in, I'm out. Uh, explain they're, that. They're not buying porn. I mean, they're consuming porn, but it's not about the porn. And I knew that when I signed up. Like, What you, is it about then? Um, it's about the connection. It's but a, you're married. I, I, by the way, I yeah. fully respect what you got going on, especially because it's your husband. But they know you're married. Sure. Are there some of them that are like, maybe she'll leave her husband for me? Or is it just <laughs> like, I just think she's swell and I got to know about those koi fish? There's, uh, it's a connection. I think it's being able, you consume porn on, you know, Pornhub or another site. You don't ever get to talk to that girl. You don't get to mm. know. I think there's an element to, they feel like you're saying, like, they you're know you. are touchable. Yeah. You're almost touchable. They can say hi. They got can it. tell you nice video. They can, you know. Hey, just want to tell you, you and your husband... Great, le- great job last night. Yeah. I mean, yeah, my site does not just have adult yeah. content. I mean, I do post stories of really? my fish or my at the Bruins game, and I get just as many likes and interactions on those as I do my content. So I do feel like it's it's called only fans for a reason because I think mm. these people are truly fans of. Sometimes it's all in the name, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's called only fans. Is like there, an athlete. go ahead, Rebecca. Could, I was gonna say, is there a safety component that you? Mm in here because just like he said this dynamic is they feel like they know you they they're in your living room they're in your bedroom right is there a safety component when you're going out and you you say where you are right you tell the audience where you are Mm -hmm. not always very good question have you run into in public one of your fans it happens very often but i can let people know i Nine times out of the ten, I have undercover security with me. They follow. They're not. You don't know they're with me, but they're watching. My husband. It's really they're there, so my husband can relax because really? he is always scanning. And what made you say, "All right, time for some security"? Something must have happened. Um, yeah, we've had a few scares. Um, we had a, a, a real, actual incident of someone threatening me and just uh, out of his mind and, and what have you. And that was very scary. But when we go to yeah. very large events. Um, we, we do have undercover security. Um, we do have a massive security in our home. I mean, we have like mm-hmm. 50 cameras outside our house. We have someone that monitors that. So and I met your husband. What's your husband's name again? Steven. Met the dude. Cool dude. Big dude. I mean, I messed with that guy. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he woke you up. Yeah. <laughs> you with him, but he's, uh, yeah, so we do have, there is a massive security. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would completely understand, like, if you've got that uh, is, many fans. Is this when you go to the movies and go, like, have dinner, you have to have security with you? No, we don't have security at dinner um like i shouldn't tell everybody well, no, if you that, go to like a convention or something any like that. event if we're gonna go out to a bar late at night okay. together and kind of just mm-hmm. have drinks and my husband needs to like let relax like I, it kind yeah. of sucks because we can't really have as much fun because yeah. he's always mm-hmm. on the lookout so it's kind of more someone there so that like he can kind of relax a little bit and have fun with me Is versus- that, i'm assuming that's expensive um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's not yeah. something, you know, but, but it's, Ruslan, it's worth it, you know, you're making that pay for <laughs> it's, it's, just doing it's a necessary I, I, expense. I have a question before we go to this. Yeah. So earlier you said, um, you know, tw- OnlyFans tw- is a 24 hour, seven days a week mm-hmm. type of thing. You're always locked in. And then you talked about in terms of being nursing and how that mm-hmm. was 18 hours yeah. a day. It, it sounds like. It sounds like you're a high performer in mm-hmm. whatever you do. Mm-hmm. I'm a, you said you're a veteran. Yeah. Thank you for serving our country. Thank you for my so you come from just a high level of output. So did 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 you how much more did you buy flexibility? Or did you buy back time? If it's still something that's all consuming, because as creators and entrepreneurs, yeah. we're always it's, yeah. here thinking yeah. about the next video, mm-hmm. the next stream. I'm thinking about, oh, can I put some of this on my channel? How can I chop? It? Right. I think we're always in that mode. So did you buy actual time, or did you just buy more flexibility to your schedule? More flexibility right now, but I think it's an it's it's giving me the opportunity to power through for maybe the next three to five years and continue like then I don't need to ever work again. I mean, even right now, I mean, honestly, the amount of money is probably some people's retirement plans. You know, I definitely could stop working, but I think right now my mentality is hustle, hustle, hustle. Um, I say this, but I have been an overachiever for a long time and that stems Mm -hmm. from my childhood, which is a lot of stuff that, you know, one day I will dive into in some form, but um, yeah, I think right now it's just, it's flexibility to be able to do that, but I'm trying to build something that will allow me to really have that time. And is it fair to say that you are an anomaly in this world based on the fact that, one, you're married, two, that you're a veteran with a 
crazy work ethic. Mm -hmm. And three, that you're, you sound fairly financially literate and, mm -hmm. and, and probably semi frugal that, that this is not the standard. This is, this is the exception to, and you're a marketer. Yeah. So you understand the story that you're with the nursing thing and COVID. Like oh, you're, yeah. you're telling a, a, a very interesting story mm -hmm. that I'm sure is mm -hmm. helping drive people there. So is it fair to say like, this is the exception to the rule. This isn't the rule to yeah. how most people probably experience this. Yeah, I could honestly say it took me a long time to accept, but I, I've really never not succeeded in anything that I've done because I just pour into. Um, and so I don't think this is achievable for the average person. That's not saying there's not other girls that are successful at OnlyFans by any means. Um, but I think given from where I started, Ground Zero as literally a hockey mom with no follower, I mean, it just... For me to turn this in less than a year and make myself into a multi million, it's impressive. And it, it took a lot for me to like own that. My husband has to say it all the time. Like, you have to look around, like, look what the heck has happened over the mm -hmm. past year. And a lot of people think the press that I was interviewed on everywhere um, is what really turned me into this. I got the press because I had already did that. Because you were already booming. Yeah. And how did they know you were making this much money? Did you tell them that? So when the press, I'm talking the about. press, the original story that went out with the Daily Beast, um, I did an interview um, and I actually was just interviewing. He was like, you're a nurse and you're doing OnlyFans. Well, as I started to say, well, actually, I'm not nursing because I just got let go from my job because of X, Y, Z. And mm. that's where the story is mm. like, mm. oh, my God, mm. like this is the story. You literally were let go. And that's where things boomed up. But yes, in that interview, you know, he asked and I had to show, you know. That I was truly making that kind of money. At that point, I think I was making seventy five, eighty thousand dollars a month is what the original. And that's what you were making a year. <laughs> As a nurse. As yeah. a nurse. See, I, this Jesus. is my theory. Yeah. And, and you guys push back. This is my this is my theory. My theory is you would have figured out content regardless. Exactly. I think you would have figured out if it, it would have came slower, but the numbers you're providing, they're they're big numbers. Mm -hmm. What do you mean figured out content? How to monetize She she would be a booming YouTuber yes. if she wanted oh, to yeah. be. Oh yeah. I, right. And so like it would have came slower because again, remove Time. lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, right? What's an easy commodity mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. tie in? But me, me, Kevin's making three, four hundred grand a month on mm -hmm. YouTube. You know, he was doing this at like five hundred thousand subscribers. So I know creators that make that money on YouTube. And again, mm -hmm. exception to the rule. But when you have your skill set, your story, and the work ethic, I think you would have figured it out. It just would have came slower for you. Yeah. yeah, I was already doing side stuff. Like I was building. You're probably familiar with Poshmark. Yeah. I was buying and selling used goods and building this Poshmark. And within the first four months, I'd already made like 40 grand. Like I was, I just, everything I do, if I pour in, I can just, I always succeed at it. Yeah. I, Let's I, look at some of these numbers. By yeah, the way. I say that because I don't want, yeah. if there's girls watching yeah. this, to hear this story and be yeah. like, I'm going to make yeah. 200K on <laughs> exactly. next month. Well, that's, yeah. let's get into these numbers. All right, so here's some OnlyFans stats. Okay, so here's some key statistics. More than 170 million people use OnlyFans, Okay. 500,000 new users join every day? Jesus. <laughs> there are more than 1.2 million content creators. We have one right here, one of the exceptional ones. It's possible to make more than $2 million a month from OnlyFans. That's the top, 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 top 0.1%. Uh, on average, uh, OnlyFans creators make around 100 grand a month. Say that again. The, only, the top creators. That's oh, the important. top creators. Okay. Got yeah. it. The average creator makes around 151 a month. Wah, wah, That's what you wah, want wah. the people to know. Yeah. The average <laughs> OnlyFans creator makes 151 a month, whereas the top makes almost 100 grand a month. Interesting. The average OnlyFans creator has 21 subscribers. Another weren't weren't. The average OnlyFans subscription is seven dollars twenty cents. OnlyFans has paid out more than two billion to creators. I want to find out who's going to be the first billionaire only fans content creator uh for some uh for some numbers so you understand growth only fans started in 2019 it's only three years old i gotta get an only fans account um 2019 had 7 million subscribers since then it's gone from 12 to 30 to 75 million in 2020 in 2021 it hit 120 million currently uh that was september so this is old this is september mm -hmm. of 2021 it's got probably over 250 million yeah. subscribers at this point, uh, is what I'm saying. Okay. Extrapolating current growth. Here, go down a little bit. Uh, the other way, sorry, Natalia. The other way. Back up. Boom. Nope. Nope. Back. All right. Keep going. The graph. Yep. Uh, no, no, no. Right above the graph. Okay. The, the world pandemic. Okay. By extrapolating the current growth rate, Google search trends, and their own research, we approximate that currently a half a million new millions joined every day. All right. We got that. It's basically exploded. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see these numbers. 
how many creators are on OnlyFans? As of 2019, 100,000. By the beginning of 2021, we're talking 1.2 million. Now there's over, I assume, 2 million. How much do OnlyFans make? This is what we wanted to understand, Ruslan. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, what is the average OnlyFans income and earnings? The average creator will make 151 a month. Keep going. Most creators lose money. Mm -hmm. How do you lose money? I would imagine like purchasing equipment, things like, you know, outfits, outfits, etc. And you're not if you're not making enough to put back. I mean, mm. you go buy a three hundred dollar lingerie. Yeah, that you, goes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We've all been the there. top <laughs> OnlyFans creator is currently Belle Delphine, who charges thirty five dollars a month. What do you know about her? I've actually never heard of Belle okay. Delphine. Well, maybe you should subscribe. There's a lot of girls that month. will shock you. You don't yeah. you never heard of them, but they're killing how many them. subscribers does the average OnlyFans content creator have the only fans the average has 21 subscribers got it all right keep scrolling down all right so the point is this it's very hard to make money on only fans if you're the average content creator you're making 150 bucks a month yeah there's no discovery feature i think that's what a lot of people don't realize you have to give it up for these girls that that do drive the traffic there because you can't promote it on your instagram you can't mm. promote it anywhere pretty much and there's no discovery feature so you're doing all your own marketing and driving your own traffic there um which obviously you hit roadblocks along every way because you're trying to drive someone to adult content so it's um, it's a lot of work that goes behind it. And you're right. The average person doesn't have the time, especially if it's a side gig and mm -hmm. or the energy to be able to do okay, it. Okay. Last question here. And then we're going to transition to what it's like to be a housewife. Oh, and then we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> um, you know, everyone's worried about a recession right now. PBD uh, just did a uh, whole video about the impending uh, doom. doom, potentially another recession. I think uh, the analogy that a lot of people are using or that we've discussed is that the economy has been on steroids for the last couple of years. We've pumped in trillions of dollars. You know, if you're a big workout guy, you just pump in steroids, you're getting big, no more money in the economy. A lot of fake people got rich, crypto stocks, you know, Wall Street bets, all that, you know, GME, GameStop, a lot of fake money, a lot of fake success. And I feel like, you know, what do they say? Like when the tide rolls back out, if you're not wearing a bathing suit, boom, you show it, you're naked. Um, not that you're an economist or anything mm -hmm. like that, okay? Not that you're um, – uh, but you did give a, a, an interview, I want to say, that um, – and I, my question is, is there a telltale sign? It's almost – what is it called? The, the canary in the coal mine? Mm -hmm. um, is that a lot of people are starting to spend less money on OnlyFans because this is called – discretionary income these aren't exactly needs these are wants mm -hmm. uh wants of the the eyes of the flesh uh, as Rusan likes to say so um are plunging only fans numbers and a sign that the economy is retreating and you said this by the way but um many top creators are hurting really bad says the lovely ali ray traffic is dipped your income has fallen 25 percent in recent weeks i don't know how long ago this was but some con content creators have dropped by 50 percent mm -hmm. So what is happening these days, and is this a telltale sign that the economy <laughs> is going to crash? Well, the New York Post, they you know they they wrote that a little bit different than it actually came out of my mouth. I got a lot of backlash for this article. Um, what I was trying to say here was that I was contacted. Is is this happening? Because Vice ran a story on um, sex workers were noticing that their incomes were down. And I said, yeah, I would say definitely there's um, – since gas prices have gone up and groceries, for sure. I mean, you're not – you're discretionary income. I'm sure, mm -hmm. you know, restaurants – Inflation, and, CPI, consumer price index, all that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, a lot of, of that. And so definitely I, I said I've, I've noticed, you know, that there's less people buying things. Um, what my main concern with this was – and I'm glad I'm getting an opportunity to actually – say what I meant by this mm -hmm. is there is a lot of creators that will it's I kind of compared it to crypto and how you know right now crypto is falling you have all these coins and there's going to be a lot that don't make it mm -hmm. and it's going to be the same thing with this is all these creators that kind of got started hoping for this big break of making 200k a month um, they're not going to be able to withstand this because it's going to take 
real marketing, real traffic, you're going to have to actually work at this point and they're not going to make it. And it worries me because there is a safety component with mm. um, mm-hmm. OnlyFans. And you think about the girls or the creators. I always say girls and that's terrible, but there are male creators um, on the streets, strip clubs. And there's a lot that I'm afraid they may go back to because that was easy. That was money they knew. And it seems easier for them than trying to actually drive track it, traffic to your OnlyFans, especially when you're hit roadblocks on every platform. Um, and so I worry about that, but do I think it's a, a sign of an impending, you know, uh, just, you know, economy or a recession potentially? I think there's actually stats that show this industry in general um, actually usually is a precursor, and when this falls, that there is some serious mm-hmm. problems coming because it's an ad- it's something of addiction for people, you know, as you've stated, and the same thing with gambling. And I imagine all those areas you start to see dips prior mm-hmm. because it's it's not. They probably a lot of guilt. You know, you can't afford gas, but yet you're buying. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I do. I am broke down on the side of the road. <laughs> can't afford gas, but damn, but I'm going to give Allie 12 bucks. A new video I got to know about those koi fish. I just have to. <laughs> what happens What happens if they did change their mind again? Yeah. Like they did back in October. Like from a, from a, I know you said you're building a different company, but yeah, is it that kind of uh, building a house mm-hmm. on the sand? Like you're building this thing and then they're like, I don't think we're going to do adult content That's exactly anymore, what right? happened with TikTok yeah. last year. Well, oh, two years ago, with yeah. Trump was going to yep. ban TikTok, yep. bite mm-hmm. dance, yep. China. Right. All right, we'll keep it. No, we won't. Right. All these TikTok, I don't know what to do. Right. It's yeah. like right. Right. with uncertainty, yeah. you better save that money or uh, mm-hmm. diversify. Well, this is me doing my business thing. And I knew when that happened was the same week my story got out. And um, I, I was making a heck of a lot of money that month. And I remember thinking, are you kidding me? Like, this is it. They're going to mm-hmm. shut it all down. Hmm. Um, and one of the things I realized is I, I started to understand why would OnlyFans want to cut off their funnel to billions of dollars? And I realized they don't. They're being told they have to. Mm-hmm. And that's by investors. By investor, it's by Visa and MasterCard in particular, investors banking. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a lot of people jumped, shipped, and went to other platforms that were comparable. And that's when my brain started saying, well, if the banks are the problems, how do we get rid of the banks? And that's what led me to crypto. My platform, Wetspace, is 100% crypto-based. We don't have a token. We're not trying to pump some coin. We just accept cryptocurrency, any stable coin. And so we're not at the risk of the bank shutting us down. Okay. And that so was, you're moving away from OnlyFans? I'm not. I still have my OnlyFans, and I, I don't want to encourage people to leave from that because it's going to – It's Obviously, crypto is a learning component that needs to happen amongst just in general. We need to grow into the crypto world and, um, and educate people on that. But um, it's more of an, an and right now. And I think uh, stability-wise, if you care about your business, you're kind of crazy for not at least establishing a presence. I think it goes for any content creation. You don't put all your eggs just on yeah. Instagram. You're on mm-hmm. YouTube and TikTok. And so um, that's my pitch to creators is I get it. It's not going to be your home base right now. But if they give you a 30 day notice, like, do you know what it felt like to get a 30 day notice like that? I was like, Oh my God, I was devastated. I thought this is it. You know, um, I want to be prepared. And so this was, this is the result of that and partnering with two amazing people who had very much the same vision. Um, and so that, that's where wet space came about and why we built that. Good for you. You know, they say anyone can make money. Not everyone can keep it. So it sounds mm-hmm. like you're, you're keeping that money. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for being vulnerable and listening and thanks for everyone for kind of their feedback there. I think that was a spirited debate right there or a conversation. <laughs> Let's talk some housewives. Okay. Uh, Rebecca, Rebecca, mm-hmm. give me your last name again. Barrett. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, from what I understand, you were killing it in New York. Yeah. You were kind of a feminist, mm-hmm. right? A um, big feminist. Big yeah. feminist, which mm-hmm. we'll talk about. Uh, but you transitioned from being a kind of a boss babe into being a housewife. Yeah. So what have you learned through that process? Well, I also want to say I was an entrepreneur. I built two businesses. I sold the first one um, and I started the second one. Actually failed during COVID because it relied on buildings. We had contracts that fell apart, investors that backed out, things of that nature. And so through that whole process, you know, I I was living this boss babe life, you know, um, just... Single. I was, I, yes, for the majority of it, I was single. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end, I I um, met my husband at an actual meeting. So um, that, that was that. And we connected and we never looked back. We, you know, just fell in love, love at first sight. <laughs> and um, we started seeing each other after that. 
Um, but yeah, I was a huge feminist. A lot of that ideology is baked into our society, like through the media. It's at a very young age, women are told, yeah, be the boss, babe. You can do whatever you mm-hmm. want. You have no consequences. Like, just keep doing that, right? And then um, in marriage, you find out, okay, well, there are roles that you have to, in my opinion, that you have to play, right? And as a wife, you know, I learned I learned what that was during premarital counseling, and then I implemented that into my marriage. And we both work on it every day, right? So, like, we live in modern society. Women work, men work, mm-hmm. all that stuff. So you see an example of this, right? 20 years together, 20 years married, different style of relationship. Ruslan, same, dif- or different, different for him, right? And so you, you're seeing different dynamics today, but I, I believe in traditional values. What you, uh, so we had um, Ali yeah. Drummond, a uh, real femme sapien on recently, yeah. who went viral for basically saying that, you know, this is how I got a husband by yeah. being a feminine woman yeah. and not, you know, kind of playing into what society tells women they need to be these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, so from your perspective, what should be the role of the modern woman today? Yeah, I mean, the 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 role of the modern wife, I want to say, is allowing your husband to lead in the relationship um, and taking taking lead from him. So I'm submissive. I know people don't like that word. They hate it. The feminists come at me at all, all times. Um, but I'm submissive to my husband, meaning I'm not a doormat. I'm not a slave to my husband. I just follow his leadership and I respect him and I respect Mm -hmm. uh, what he's done for my family, for our family. And so I follow under that leadership. Ali, I believe, used the term willfully compliant. Yeah, willful cooperation. Willful cooperation. Would you say that your husband leads your relationship? I'm talking to you, Ali. Mm -hmm. Would you say that your husband leads your relationship and you follow? Um, I think we've always had a partnership, to be honest. I mean, I definitely, um, I see the... I see what's happening with the, the roles and such in marriage. And there's a lot, I'm actually probably more aligned than you think is odd is that I live a little bit differently. Um, but I, I would say our, we've always had a partnership and let, I, I would say I look to him overall for the, um, safety of our family and security, but I think there's a lot that he looks to me as well. Gotcha. Like we kind Ruslan, of balance do you that. lead your relationship with your wife? Like she said, the, so, so what are the a common phrase that we have learned in the manosphere or the red pill mm-hmm. communities? We say is that men lead, women follow. Sounds like that's something that you abide by. Well, yeah, and you know I've even learned this from the church, right? Mm-hmm. The the man is the head, the woman's the neck. You can't turn the head without the neck. Ooh, so I like um, that symbolism right there. Is that something <laughs> yeah, you learned that in the I mean, church? That's, that's a great way to describe it yeah i I believe in complementarianism Mm -hmm. um which is a a view of everything right so men and women are equal in value and dignity and worth Mm -hmm. however women have different roles men have different roles and ideally uh yeah the man is gonna lead he's gonna provide but that doesn't mean that he's a tyrannical you know mobster Mm -hmm. that's like (laughs) you know folks are getting whacked if you don't do what i say and oftentimes i think the best leaders in any organizations are the people that don't have to constantly remind you that they're the leader they just lead Mm -hmm. and because they're great leaders you follow Mm -hmm. you know and so uh and and i do and my wife is brilliant and she's very helpful and i do listen to her so that's that's not to say like you men don't ever listen to your wife yeah Yeah. uh, i do listen to my wife there is a difference Um, between a leader and a boss Yes, correct. You ever seen that that picture of like uh, yeah, yeah yeah that little meme and the little yeah. meme yeah. where like the leader is like follow me and like yeah. the, the guys are behind him kind of and he's leading, mm-hmm. whereas the boss is behind them guy like whipping mm-hmm. while they're they're pulling him. But um, back to Rebecca, the um, a lot of the women, I'm sure you, you said the feminists kind of hate you. They hate me. Mm-hmm. They ha- okay. A, why do they hate you? And then B, can you be both? Can you be a career woman and a submissive? housewife mom is it possibly both and is that what the feminists hate about you is that you're like i just would rather be a housewife and listen to my husband i don't want to have a career anymore like give us that perspective yeah so you know i I was very much involved in the feminist movement i was at the marches all that stuff. oh straight up yeah yeah, yeah. full-on marching of it (laughs) yes vagina hat on (laughs) Yes. The whole deal. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. Send me one of those hats, by the way. I, no, I don't. I burned all <laughs> Did you literally burn a hat? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Sorry for, I guess I'm not sorry, but No, you're yeah. clearly not sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, but you were full on feminist. Yeah. And, I, and so I speak out against feminism and what it's done to women. Mm -hmm. And so that that's the real issue is that feminism by, I guess, the if you look at like the book, right? Like if you read it, it sounds great. Women's equality, all that stuff. Of course. Who doesn't want that, right? I, I like to keep, still keep voting and things of that nature. But yeah. in practice, you're seeing a lot of misandry. You're seeing a lot of hatred towards men. You're seeing a lot of, well, I don't have to have accountability for my actions, but men still have to mm -hmm. be accountable for their actions. And, you know, it, and feminism is also a spectrum, right? So you have the the ones that shave their heads. I also did that. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. like the ones that are like the fringe, right? And then you have beautiful OnlyFans models. And I'm not saying that's that's you particularly, but you have a spectrum of feminism. And I think a lot of times too, it's so baked into the society, into our culture, that you don't even know that you're saying a feminist I ideology. You don't even know that you're spewing it out, but you are. Okay. Um, and so, like, get that bag, make that money, like, all of those things. I'm a boss bitch, I'm a yeah. bad bitch, that yeah. whole thing. Is yeah. that... That's like, a that's a form of feminism, okay. right? What is the worst? I need you to be super real right Male here. Male feminists. Okay, that, I was going to ask you what the worst of the worst of the worst when it comes to feminism is. Male feminists. What is that? The men who pretend to be feminists, and a lot of them are actually, they hate women. They, they, uh, they oppress women. And so it's like the opposite of what you would expect. I have zero clue what you're talking about right now. What do you mean? They hate women, but they're male feminists? Yeah. It's, but they pretend it's, to care? Okay, Walk us si through that. similar thing to the whole woke ideology. Yeah. You know, this person says, I'm a racist, right? But they have, they've said racist things. Does that, mm. does that make sense or no? Okay, so give us the, uh, an example of these male feminists. Uh... You know, uh, okay, a male feminist would say, your body, your choice, mm -hmm. right? And then <laughs> hook up with someone and then, you know. Tell them to get an abortion. Yeah, yeah. Just, it's, there's different, uh, there's different forms of it, but. What, 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 like, it sounds like there's almost indoctrination. Yeah, no, it is. Meaning from like. From childhood, yes. Okay, what. Walk us through what the indoctrination process. It's not like a formal process. Welcome to women's feminism class. Yeah, it, but what is the indoctrination it's, process? It's the movies. It's the TV shows. It's um, putting men to be like these dopey characters, like Family Guy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, the woman knows everything and she is the leader of the house. And the man is an idiot and just doping around like, Oh, I don't know what to do. I have to rely on my wife. Like mm -hmm. think about any 90 sick. I can't cook. What do I have? going to starve yeah. to death. Yeah. Yeah. If my wife isn't home. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Well, it's just this, you know, idea that gets painted and everything. And then, you know, you have these superheroes that these female superheroes that can beat every man and then can take on like multiple mm -hmm you know, multiple villains at the same time. Realistically, women are weaker. Like we are physically weaker than mm -hmm. men. I don't think that I could beat up a six foot five, you know, a NFL player. Maybe Ruslan has a better chance. Maybe you have a better mm -hmm. chance. But Do you think you could take Ruslan in a fight? No. I think you should guys should figure it out, right? <laughs> <laughs> But there's um, got to be some women that make men a little bit. No, I mean, there's. By some the way, girls. you've got questions for our panel. We're going to answer that at the end of the episode, uh, or do you want to do this now? Okay, we'll do that at the end of the episode. So stay tuned. We got a hard out at six here. So, as you were. Yeah, and so it's it's baked into our culture, and mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I speak out against feminism. I have a whole Reddit community that hates me. I'm not feminist enough. I'm not tradcon enough. I'm not anything enough. Mm -hmm. I just exist <laughs> and I try to be the best version. I try to be a better version of myself every single day. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of, um, so like the movie American History X, right? Mm -hmm. Ed Norton. Mm -hmm. um, 
he was a full on neo Nazi, mm. you know, all that. And then he was fully indoctrinated, his brothers, his family, and all that. And then we, there's case examples of this, whether it's KKK stuff or yeah. whatever, it's church related stuff. Um, you go through it, you're in it. Like you said, you yeah. shaved your head full on feminism. Yes. And then you kind of realize, holy shit. Yeah. And now you're like, all right, cool. I'm out of that world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm out of the cult. Mm-hmm. Right. And and now I'm speaking truth to power, so to speak, mm-hmm. as to what it's really like there on the inside. Yeah. It's, so I had a lot of. So um, as a, you know, I was a female CEO. I had a lot of female advisors. Mm hmm. And I found that my male advisors, that my male investors were actually looking out for me more than my female advisors. Why is that? It's a competition thing. And I mean, you can look at anything that women are together. It's like, I need to be the alpha. Yeah. I want to be the top dog. You're saying women are more competitive and catty Catty, than guys are. Like if I saw Ruslan kill it, like he had a... Made a lot of money. I'm like, yo, what up, brother? Respect. But yeah. I'm not hating on the dad. No, on the, but on that the, comes with the territory and females. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Very much so. Why is that? Especially if you're, especially if you're at that higher level, they don't want you to surpass them. Mm. And then from that point, they are demoted, and now you are the oh, star. Wow. Yeah. Mm. They want to be the focus. I, have you experienced that, Ali? By the way, since you've kind of been killing it, making a lot of money. Have you seen like women in your life? Obviously, like the nurse who worked with you ratted on you and snitched yeah. on you. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about full on friends. Have you seen friends be like, "Fuck you now"? Like, oh yeah. Holy shit. Like, what have you experienced with that? A lot. I mean, I I totally see with what you're seeing. It's it's really sad. That we have this huge women's movement about coming, but yet we're not. <laughs> There's a lot of – most women go at each other, and that's terrible. Um, I've always been in the notion like someone else is doing well. It should make you say, what are you doing? Well, how do I do that? Well, yeah. you know, make you want to drive harder, but unfortunately, others will try to tear you down. I think that's good advice yeah. to our audience, by the way. Yes. We can all kind of weigh in. Like, there's, like I felt – I remember watching – I'm not going to say names. I remember watching somebody, and, and like they were doing something really good on social media, video, okay? And I'm like, Man, this guy ain't all that. He's kind of a nerd. He's kind of sucks. He ain't that cool. And I'm like, I'm like Adam, what are you doing? Yeah. You're like hating on this dude you don't even know because he's doing better than you. Why don't you actually actively listen and see what he's talking about mm-hmm. and take some nuggets as to what they're talking about and apply that and just improve mm-hmm. and just get better. It's so easy to hate. Yeah. It's so easy to hate. It's a lot harder to congratulate, mm-hmm. right? Like, don't be a hater. Like, don't drink the haterade. Mm-hmm. But that's you're saying that this kind of comes with female nature. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, and you'd think it'd be getting better because, I mean, even like on TikTok, there's a lot of, uh, you, you know, even like the tone of it seems like it's like us supporting or like, oh, you know, I, I get it. I've been there. You know, <laughs> like they're trying to relate. But for some reason, it's still very much embedded. Mm. Yeah, it's, And it's a subtle, it's like subtle disses, mm-hmm. right? It's backhanded compliments. It's things that are, it's like, oh, you know, um, I would have been there or so, whatever. Yeah. It's like, if I got that same exposure, then I would be in the same place as you are. Like, no, I worked my butt off for this and mm-hmm. that's why I'm in this position. And, you know, yeah. and that's a lot of, and that's female nature. But that goes with hypergamy and all that other stuff, too. Yeah. You want the top. You want the top of the top. Um, and, yeah, that's just <laughs> how So what, what's your ultimate advice to women? Um, my ultimate advice is get married, have babies, don't put them in public schools. <laughs> <laughs> She's like pretty specific. But I guess my question is, can you do both? Can you be a boss babe, make your money, get that bag, have a career, but also be a feminine woman, wife, mother. Can you do both? I think it's very difficult to do both. I think that, so for me in particular, I have a YouTube channel. It's, you know, 60, almost 64,000 subscribers. Last year when I was pregnant, right before I gave birth, I, you know, I was working hard at it. I was making videos Mm -hmm. all the time. I had to take a back seat to my YouTube channel, right? And because you had a kid, yeah, yeah. but also because because my family comes first, mm-hmm. YouTube and whatever else comes second or third, wherever it comes, you know. And so, what I often find is that career focused women don't 
um, lack in the family department because you can't do it all. You can't have it all. You can't do it all. And at some point, there are things that lack, right? Whether that's family, whether that's not making enough money or all the money that you want to make or you didn't hit the milestones that you wanted to hit. All of these things come like they all have, you know, a play here. So for me, I think that, yes, you can work. You can make good money. I make good money on YouTube. I mean, we're not we're not struggling. OK, but at the same time, if I had to walk away today, I would drop everything and say, I'm I'm just focused on my family. So your advice is to be a mother and wife first and then yes. second. Yeah. Be a, and, I, uh, and I think businesswoman. and I think, too, right, I'm very entrepreneurial. I'm not I'm not stupid. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I can help my husband and I, I encourage him and I give him, you know, I can give my husband advice and sometimes he does takes it. Sometimes he doesn't. And, you know, it's, that's, that's the relationship that we have. He knows that I, I'm an intelligent person. He takes, he gets advice from me on, on business stuff all the time. But at the end of the day, my family comes first, my relationship comes first, my relationship with God comes first, then my husband, then my child, yeah. and then everything else. <laughs> By the way, is that a similar relationship yeah. you have with your wife? 100%. Sounds very similar 100%. to what you discussed. I would say a lot of people have these relationships. Yeah. The issue is we don't preach what we practice. Yeah. We know what she's describing is optimal for a human family to flourish. Like, we know that. Like, hey, it's ideal to have one parent at home. Hey, it's ideal not to send your kids away to a public school for six hours a day when it's only two hour and a half, two hours of actual work. Mm -hmm. I know because my son gets homeschooled. Why am I sending him away to a bunch of strangers to be around him mm -hmm. all day? Socialization, he gets that. He plays sports. He, he's right. fine, right? So I think if, if we're honest, a lot of people – regardless on political affiliation, on if they're woke or liberal or whatever, would say, oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. They've done studies on it. I'm sure you know, Adam. They've done studies that uh, uh, dual income families net less than single mm -hmm. income provider families. Mm -hmm. Because when you factor in the gas, when you factor in the dry cleaning, when child you factor care. in child care, eating out, you take home less money. The issue is our society knows but they don't preach what they practice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where I think we need more very, people. To, by the way, to say you just that. brought up a very interesting point. You're saying that if there's one breadwinner and one, let's assume that's the man mm -hmm. without, you know, feminists going crazy. Uh, and the woman stays at home, does more of the motherly maternal teacher, you know, yes. Taking mm -hmm. care, rearing and the husband can focus on work, uh, gaining resources, what have you, mm -hmm. that that family is takes is, home more yeah, money, net, net, nets net, more money yes. net, net, versus yeah. having two cars, yes. Yes. having more gas, yes. having mm -hmm. to be out of the house. Yes. You got to send your kids out of the house. Very interesting data right there. Yep. Huh. Yep. yep. And it's been like that for a couple of decades. Yeah. But women feel the need to get out of the house and work too. Because yeah. they don't want to be seen as like leave it to Beaver, stay at home, without, wear well, the apron and cooking all day. Well, that is that is the trope, right? And so feminists hate me because I went from being a boss babe to essentially being what they idealize, right? To being just a stay at home mom yeah. yes, or just a stay at home so wife. Mm -hmm. Like, look at what she's doing. She's she's feeding into the patriarchy and all this other mm -hmm. crap that they like to say when in fact my relationship is the most healthy it's ever been right my relationship with my family my re my relationships in general all together i'm a less abrasive person to mm -hmm. be around and to me my life and our life has increased and my husband makes way more money than i would have made if I had continued yeah. doing gotcha. what they, I did. They surveyed mothers who work, kids under 18. They found out that over 55% of mothers with kids under 18 would prefer to stay at home Absolutely. if given the option. 55%. 50, and this was a pro-women's mm -hmm. website. So that's kids under 18. Imagine if they surveyed... Mothers with kids under 10 who 10. work, mm -hmm. what percentage do you think that would be? It would probably be through the roof. Exactly. If given the opportunity, most women, the, at least 56%, the majority of under 18, so if you've got kids under 10, under 5, 
I would, I would, I would, I would venture it's probably in the 80s or 90s that mm. women would. I was to stay almost home. hesitant to come back to YouTube because I wanted to spend every waking second with my daughter. She's three months old. I'm like, how can I take a a little bit of my time yeah. to come back mm-hmm. to YouTube? And you know, it's it's you you see it in the numbers, right? You look at the analytics. As a content creator, you're looking at the dip in your analytics. Mm-hmm. You're looking at the dip in your money. You're like, oh. YouTube does a terrible job of telling you too, by exactly. the way. You open your dashboard up and it's like, you're, you suck. Yeah. You're trash. Yeah. You took a break. Because you took a break. <laughs> yeah, I took a two. I took a almost th- three and a half month break or three month break. And YouTube hated me. <laughs> I, I went out of the algorithm. And you know how it is. Like, you want to stay relevant. You want to mm-hmm. stay in the know you want to get to the numbers that you guys see right and so yeah it sucks but at the same time would i trade that for my family absolutely not so i have a question then i guess just to play like a little devil's advocate if um with inflation obviously and things getting more expensive if you were in any type of financial like where you needed more income and your mm-hmm. husband was at a job where he was, that's where he gets paid. Like mm-hmm. there was not, he was, capped. He was yeah. capped. Would you think it falls on his responsibility to go find more money for our household or would it be, a, would you feel compelled to want to help bring in that supplemental See, income? And, um, I would, I would bring in supplemental income, but working from home mm-hmm. yeah. and less time spent. Like if a part-time job is not like essentially YouTube is my part-time job. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, I make this is our fun money. And so he makes the bill pay money yeah. and I make fun money. And I think it's great. I think women that stay at home, right? The whole the whole notion is like, oh, she's gonna she's gonna get divorced and then eventually, you know, she's not gonna get anything and whatnot. Women learn skills. I know so many entrepreneurs that built their businesses from their mm-hmm. home yeah. that raised series A, series B money, okay? Mm-hmm. And so they, and then they say, well, I'm not going to be the CEO. I'm just going to be on the board, right? Or I'm just going to sit the backstage because I don't want to be at the forefront of this yeah. company. I built it to this point, hand it off, still making yeah. so much money. I think mm-hmm. the key in that is developing skills where you can trade results for money and not time for money. Exactly. Because I think we're conditioned to trade time for money. And there's a season yeah. for life where, where you have to do that. You're just starting in a new career. Yeah, of course. But you have to trade time for money. But I think ultimately, if you're trading results, a viral video, building a business, you're trading results for money, you're always going mm-hmm. to win. And I think so many of us are conditioned to like, go to four years, get the student loan debt, yeah, yeah, get yeah. a career, and then get married when you're 30. And then... What's going to happen? You're going to want to have kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? Well, then, you know, so I think like the projections on women is really hard. All these things you do. Russo, let me ask you, you, uh, because you've said something before because you were talking about career and everything. You've said something. You guys did an interview about this. What you've done is you've taken the stairs, not the elevator. Mm -hmm. You've used this terminology Mm -hmm. before because you said that, I mean, you met your wife when you were 19. She was 17, something like that. Late high school. Um, you said you were struggling with debt. You weren't making a lot of money. You did the Ramsey baby steps. Mm-hmm. Finally, things popped off as a rapper, as a content creator. But you took the stairs, not the elevator. Everyone wants to get so you know rich quick these mm-hmm. days. Crypto, Game Stock, whatever, yeah. whatever. What have you learned on the come up? You know, being with your wife the entire time, mm-hmm. right? You and I couldn't be any more opposite. By the way, even though we're homies, it's like <laughs> I'm 41 years old, single, South Beach, making tons of money, whatever, doing my thing. <laughs> Like, come on board, you know, this rocket ship if you want, ladies. But you had the grind with your wife when you were, like, eating ramen noodles. Yeah. Explain that grind. Yeah. You know, the stability that that brought, the consistency, the Mm -hmm. just just keeping balanced, right, Mm -hmm. and not overdoing it, you know. And and my wife always, when I would veer off course and I would work too long, too hard, get unhealthy, she would have just very gentle ways of correcting Mm -hmm. me. And And I think... Had I been single, I think I probably would have self-imploded by this point. You know, why would you have self-imploded though? Because you think, didn't have restraints. Yeah, because I think I, I I have that maniacal, borderline addictive personality mm. that like if I'm locked into something, I'll just go, won't sleep, and it's not healthy. And so having a family, having a wife that yeah. cares, 
having a, a home that's in order, right? If you go to a bachelor, bachelor's <laughs> crib versus you go to, you know, a, a home with a wife that stays home. It's totally, even a wife that works, you go to a wife that works and a wife that stays at home, the homes just feel different. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the cleanliness is different, right? Yeah. All my, of these different my, my uh, house does not feel like a wife. <laughs> yes. Like, it, where's the wifey? I, yeah. And so, and I so, have a maid though. So. And, and what, what I've also noticed is that my friends who did take the elevator, Seldom were a, were they able to sustain it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and seldom were they able to transition it into something long term. Because, as you know, m- we make the majority of our our, our peak income in our forties, mm-hmm. and so this whole like get rich in your twenties, like that's yeah. all that's all relatively new. Men usually making their forties, fifties. Mm-hmm. So. What I've learned is people that make all their income earlier, whether mm-hmm. they're YouTubers, rappers, whatever, athletes, they they blow it, man. Yeah. A lot again, mm-hmm. there's there's exceptions to the rule, but generally speaking, because they don't have a foundation. Because they don't have a foundation, exactly. and I think having a family creates that foundation. It gives you something deeper, and I think people un, under value and underestimate birth and mm-hmm. what birth will mm-hmm. do to you, mm-hmm. especially watching a baby that yeah. you help yeah. create. As a man, I'm sure pushing one out is very difficult. Ladies, <laughs> but watching something you mm-hmm. created come out and then that thing grows and then it develops a personality and preferences and idiosyncrasies. I mean, you met my son. Like, yeah. this is the trippiest thing in the world. Cool dude right yeah, there. But I don't know anyone that, that experiences that and goes, yeah, I think this is all by accident and there's no God and there's no order to the universe. Like, I don't think, I don't know anyone that experiences that. Like, that, that seeing my son and uh, daughter born was... Mm-hmm. One of the most faith assuring things I've ever experienced. Speaking of kids, let's pull up this next story. But I want to get your. Um, th- this is about the the church um, and the uh, the ladies protesting. But real quick, mm. uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this, Ruslan. Mm-hmm. Biggest lesson that you've learned in the Bible about money. What was it? Debt is dumb, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and very seldomly can be handled responsibly. Hmm. Most people are going to completely fumble it. And so if you're going to use debt, make sure you're stable and you're solid and you know what you're doing. But I would say that's the biggest thing. And, How Dave Ramsey of you. Yeah. And and, <laughs> and, and and in that, delayed gratification. Yeah. Give up what you want now for what you want most. Yeah. And what I think we, that's that's the biggest thing. They say thing. Uh, focus on your um, your... Focus on your needs now so you can have your wants later. 100%. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah. And by the way, I think that the quote that you were saying with uh, the Bible was, um, the borrower is slave, slave to, to the, the lender. lender. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting mm-hmm. stuff yeah. right there. All right. So you were talking about kids. You saw what happened at um, our friend Joel Osteen's church. Yeah. Did you see this? Mm-hmm. So this. obviously, Roe versus Wade is a very... Uh, Hot topic these days, yep. fair to say. Yep. Uh, the debate is very strong with the leaked uh, judgment at the Supreme Court mm-hmm. uh, about potentially Roe versus Wade being overturned, my body, my choice, all that good stuff. Um, so here's some uh, evidence of what these ladies did um, at Joel Osteen's church in Houston. So then, um, let's go to Rolo's tweet. And then Rolo, uh, Rolo Tomasi, been on the show, friend of the show. He says, women's only real agency in life is their sexuality. It's why they always get naked when they want <laughs> Rolo's attention. Rolo's a savage, man. Hashtag, they savage. always there's, there's get a, naked. There's some things we disagree on, but when it comes to this kind of stuff, I think he nails it. Yeah. Really? I think he mm-hmm. nails Explain it. Explain why. Yeah. Well, one, something that's... What's happening here is they're actually violating the FACE Act. I wanted to yeah. say that, too. So a FACE Act is pro-life protesters can't go into an abortion mm-hmm. clinic and pro- pro-abortion activists can't go into a church mm-hmm. or a mosque or a uh, religious, religious oh, the FACE yes. Act. The FACE Act. Yes. So mm-hmm. what they're doing here is they're violating something that they can get sued and arrested for. Yes. And, and it's stupid. Like, it's actually stupid. Second of all, they go to Joel Osteen's church. <laughs> like... 
We don't purpose. take Joel Osteen seriously. Like the pro-life community <laughs> doesn't take him seriously. The Christian community doesn't take him seriously. Really? Yeah. This is the. I thought he's like the biggest evangelist in the world. No. Motivational speaker. Yeah. yeah. Motivational I don't even speaker. Think he calls himself an evangelist or a pastor, right? Well, so, he's at a church, Ruslan. What do you mean? Yeah. yeah no, I don't, I don't think they call it a church either. Uh, really? I don't know. I'm, I'm, but he definitely doesn't refer to himself as a pastor. Really? Yeah. So okay. I think you're. This is. So you're saying Joel Osteen, not to sidetrack, that he's kind of like a. Sham? Not a sh- He's a motivational speaker. Yeah, he's not at someone- a church in front of thousands of people. I don't even think there's overlap with them in the pro life conversation. You know, so they did this for attention. Like they did this to like mm-hmm. they could have pulled up to a church that actually like engages in the in these things Correct. and they just went to the biggest church they could find because they wanted attention. Some people like Ali might call these ladies an, a marketing genius. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I yeah, don't. but I don't, and I don't, and I don't think this does anything to their cause. Absolutely. Yeah. Really? I, don't, I don't think I don't this persuades think. anyone. We're talking about it now. Are you yeah. saying that the actual uh, this is this doesn't win anyone happen. over to be like, yeah, women should have well, more abortions and kill more babies. Wow. But this is feminism 101. Right. Okay. Right? These are the tactics that they use. And they'll say, oh, uh, it's my body, my choice. I can be a sex worker if I want to. But then literally in the same sentence, shame another woman for wanting traditional values. And this is this is literally textbook feminism 101. Hmm. This is what they teach you. Make a, yeah. make a scene, literally take off your clothes in order to get attention. Because that's the only way your voice is going to be heard. And the sad part is... They are probably ignorant of the fact that the vast majority of pro-life advocates are women, Mm -hmm. that the rights people are fighting for, the most European nations have way more restrictive abortion limits than we do. Mississippi, 16-week ban, uh, Florida, 15-week ban, Italy, Spain, 12-week ban, 10-week ban. Mm -hmm. So the entire conversation is just utterly goofy. I didn't know that. You're saying that that – you're saying Europe, and Europe the EU has, has more restrictive strict, laws yes. on abortion Absolutely. than we do in the reddest states in America? Correct. We're one of the seven nations that has elective abortion past 20 weeks. Mm-hmm. One of seven nations worldwide mm-hmm. that has So that. worldwide, what's the common denominator there? What do you, what do you mean? The meaning like you said 10 weeks, 8 weeks, 12 weeks? It's about 12 weeks. Because yeah. I've never had a period. You know, I don't yeah. plan on having <laughs> anyone soon. Weeks. I'm not going to get that woke and transgender. Yeah. However... Twelve weeks. Some, is, some women don't even know they're pregnant for four to six well, weeks. We have right? modern. Yeah. We have modern medicine. I, I don't think we can blame. I don't think we can use that argument anymore. Literally, a pregnancy test is as cheap as a dollar. You go to the dollar store, you get a pregnancy test. There's actually talk no about ex- save that money. Holy shit! I thought they were like twenty bucks a pop. Exactly. Yeah, accurate, but it is a dollar. <laughs> it is a dollar, and then you can go on Amazon and buy a whole pack, and you can figure out your ovulation. There's literally no reason why we can't understand what our bodies are doing. I will say that it is because modern birth control is it has completely messed up the hormones in a mm-hmm. woman's body and so therefore if you pretend and if you if your if your body imitates pregnancy every month how are you supposed to know mm. and so we play these games right feminist oh God, this is what i love so much Women play these games, right? They say, oh, I'm going to have sex with whoever I want. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to deal with the consequences Mm. of your actions. Mm. Right. It takes two to have sex. Um, Let's give a biology lesson. It takes two to have sex. The sperm enters the... Maybe we can have your husband come here and act it out. (laughs) We can actually do this thing right now. Cameras on. Cameras on. Steve Rose. IP rights right here. (laughs) But this is what Rolo, back to Rolo, I'm sure he'll take this clip and chop it up, but he talks about... Abortion is hypergamy. They get pregnant by a baller stud. They're going to have the baby. They get Absolutely. pregnant by their broke boyfriend loser. <laughs> abortion. Absolutely. And then let's talk about the rights. We talk about uh, my body, my choice, right? What about the choice of the man who didn't know mm-hmm. that one, you carried that pregnancy to term. Mm-hmm. And then you show up 10 months at his door saying, knock, knock, you owe me child support. Yeah. He's like, for the, what? For 18 years of his life, yeah. his it, because the courts will always side with the mm. woman. 18, what does Kanye say? 18 years, yeah. 18, 18 years. years. And on the 18th birthday, they found out what it is. Damn. It's sad. I By think, the way, I think this just shows, I mean, I think how indoctrinated we've become in some of this stuff, mm. right? Like, I think you laid it out perfectly. Biology, just basic. It's basic. Just basic biology. Basic you know, don't objectify me, but I could sleep with whoever I want to sleep with. 
Like mm, it, it, it's so many contradictions. My body, my choice. After we just mandated vaccines. Right, like oh, the, oh shoot, I wasn't supposed to say that. Jabby, yeah. uh, jab. You know, By the way, we talked so, about there's always a gray area over here. Yeah. Anyway, I know that you got to run soon, um, guys. This has been awesome. Uh, what I want, uh, Natalia, I know you've been you've been actually oh, yeah, way too quiet. I wanted you to speak more, but she's been very quiet. <laughs> but it's all you know. Kudos to the great panel. We've got some comments. We got some super chats. Go ahead, Natalia. The the mic is yours. Yes. So we've got some super chats. This one is by Zenitens. Um, $50, thank you. Um, he said, only fans girls are bad, um, but because of their lack of moral fiber. Why would any man of worth who meets all of her metrics choose a woman that is indiscriminately shows slash gives her body for money as a mother of his child? Then look at how the family courts affect them. So that was a comment. OnlyFans. Do you have anything to say? I don't know if he's commenting on the whole part about wifing up an OnlyFans girl or if he is. Well, we've established that. We we, Mm -hmm. keep going. Um, We've got uh, another one, and this one says: uh, Did the former nurse said she made seventy five thousand dollars a month or a year as a nurse? Uh, As a nurse, I made as about eighty thousand a year. Seventy five thousand was what I made on OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. Then. I in a, a month. Mm-hmm. In a month. I actually had a question. If you are able to make the same amount of money with what you're doing now, um, doing something else, would you pick that as an option? Or do you, like, enjoy what you do for the amount of money you get? Um, that's a really good question. I yeah. mean, I think, obviously, I'd probably just, for a lot of other reasons and the hate and everything that you get, maybe would choose something else. But I, I'm honestly not doing anything different in my life than I wouldn't mm-hmm. be doing. I'm mm-hmm. just filming it. Right. So I would still be doing the same thing. Gotcha. Nice. Okay. This one is also, uh, this one says, uh, here we go. Uh, this is by Fast and the Furious, a hundred dollars. So thank you. Respect. Thank you guys. <laughs> it is. He said, um, "It is like saying dealing a drug is okay, so you, so I have more time for with my family, um, and conditioning your family to be okay with it." Anything you want to say to that? Just keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we, we gotta wrap a, up in three minutes. Mm-hmm, so we have another one. Um, actually, I think those are all the ones that are... That Any we, final comments, Natalia, that you want to, that you see on the chat or that you want to convey um, to the world something you've learned? Um, I think that something that I've learned today, I think that, uh, it's really a matter of like what you want in life. It's a really a matter of like how you want to represent yourself and like, you know, what you firmly believe in. You know, I think even your situation, like with the OnlyFans and your husband, I can see why people maybe may think like it's okay, you know, because you are married, you are essentially a housewife, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But you still putting have, in that work. But, she, but you're putting in that work, and maybe not on a YouTube channel, but you're putting it in OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I do have a question: is like now when it comes to like your kids and and that aspect of things, would you say that like do you? avoid having that talk about like sex with them or is that something that like Mm -hmm. now in the industry that you're in this is something that like you can kind of be more open with or have you had like that type of conversation with them because I feel like today like a lot of time like parents don't talk to their Mm -hmm. kids about sex so they look for like OnlyFans content to get an idea of like what it's supposed to be Mm -hmm. like or or porn and I think maybe even like your situation like being an OnlyFans like in a relationship it can kind of give like maybe couples who are married some sense of like oh like you know we should try this or like you know I'm into something else or maybe they're not fulfilling you so you could find maybe what you're lacking in your marriage um like in some of your content yeah i had the sex talk with my kids pretty i'm a nurse you know by heart so i i definitely had it very young on i've never been shamed or talked to them we started off talking about stds etc so um we we've had the talks and i don't think that's changed at all given what i'm doing now i think it's different for me because Mm -hmm. it is with my husband and i don't look at it the way that general porn Mm -hmm. is looked at i think that's just the way that i view it and do you think the only fans maybe have given you more confidence as a mom or as a woman as a woman absolutely i i look at myself at the age of 
you know, 38 and think I probably had no business starting and doing any of this, but there's all walks. I mean, everyone has their thing and I don't think you have to be any cookie cutter or look a certain way to be successful in OnlyFans. As a matter of fact, I know you don't. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people. That's like if you go, not, I'm not calling you a stripper, I'm just saying, <laughs> you go to the strip club, not that I've been recently. Um, some guys like the big girls, some guys like the black girls, some guys like the little Latina girls, some guys like the skinny white girls, some guys like the innocent girls, some guys like the girls that it. don't speak English. Different strokes, different folks is what yeah. you say. <laughs> Let's leave it there. Um, what I would like everyone to do is, this is the final thoughts wrap up right now. So you have a camera, look straight into the camera, bunch of people watching. By the way, subscribe. Thank you. Like. Thank you everyone for uh, being the, uh, uh, doing the super chats. But tell the world, tell the audience what they should take away from you and we'll go down the line go ahead i think uh, i would say the biggest takeaway is just to release the labeling and that there is gray that it's not always black and white and exactly what it seems i kind of am the exception to some of this rule i carry myself differently and i'm a different face to this industry and so if anything comes of this i hope that i can help some of that stigma um for people that are in this industry that get you know judged on many many levels that you there's all walks of it and mm -hmm. so i think that would be the biggest takeaway is to just you know understand that it's not always cookie cutter there's always an exception like that all right so uh, rebecca former full-on feminist <laughs> shaved the head the whole vagina hat the whole deal and now she's dropping dimes on how women should act in a uh normal relationship what would you like the viewers to understand about you um, well, my takeaway that I want to put out there, get married, have babies, don't put them in public schools. <laughs> <laughs> very specific. <laughs> I'm very specific with this. And, um, if you, if you believe that you're a feminist, reach out to me cause I'll, I'll help you walk that back. <laughs> okay. If you believe you're a feminist. Ruslan, I know you got to go, but, yeah. um, thank yeah. you for being here, brother. Go ahead. I would, I think. The easiest thing I could say is a lot of what you're looking for fulfillment in is found in faith in Christ. And I think most people don't know that. And it's a it's a worldview that is based on the greatest story ever told, except it happens to be true. And I would encourage everybody who's listening to uh, do do look at the resurrection, look at the bodily resurrection. Don't get caught up in the religious aspect. Don't don't get caught up in the hypocrisy. Look at the resurrection. Ask yourself. Is Jesus who is Jesus who he claimed to be? And if he is, uh, then then that's that's a really big big statement. And I would encourage you to look at the resurrection and ask if you if you're brave enough, ask and pray and say, Jesus, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. And that's how it started for me. And it's literally impacted everything in my life and caused the most amount of flourishing, by and large. And so I would I would, you know, try Jesus, don't try me. <laughs> <laughs> Respect. Well, I started off the podcast by basically saying a Jew, a Christian, a housewife, and an OnlyFans model walk into a podcast. And it's been as <laughs> fun as and exciting yeah, as, as I thought that it would be. Um, this is what we do here at Valuetainment. This is what we do here in the Southcast. We have these types of conversations. Some might call it spirited debates. I, I call it dialogue. And we have different perspectives. Not everyone is right. This is why we need to come together and find some common ground. And I think there was a lot of common ground here. And maybe we all go to church. We bring our OnlyFans audience. We bring Joel Osteen's audience. So we all do a little They're kumbaya. Put us in the back. Yeah, and then we'll be in the back. Maybe we throw some clothes off and have a good time and uh, protest. But thank you guys for tuning in to Southcast. This is where money and relationships meet. We'll see you guys next time. Save that money. Peace out.